No need for you to wear in your coat to take it off. Your school days. Love them. I was wondering about black hole formation because I was laying in bed last night and I started thinking about how 99% of everything is empty space. Yeah, I, I don't like to dwell on that because that's quite worrying. Or loathe them. We know diameter is circumference divided by pi. What three is three pi? Is Where did it come from? You never forget them. All right, clear off, scumbags. At this school in Essex, 160 students are in their final and most important year, and their head teacher has grand ambitions. The mantra that we use is nobody leaves without enough qualifications to make the next step in their life. But that's easier said than done. Sir, mm. I feel like crying for no reason. Is that normal? Um, what, well, your age, yeah. They're teenagers. Emotional. In the nicest possible way. It's a girl. Excitable. It's the laughing. <laughs> Always laughing. And a constant challenge. You will never, ever come up against people who are as calm and patient as we are for the rest of your life. Oh, how does he do You are such a fucker. <laughs> oh! This series reveals what life is really like in a modern secondary school. Feeling bruised. For the teachers. We are trying to deliver you a future. I think we have a responsibility to give them the right chances. You have no idea how much <laughs> I like teaching you. You have no idea. And today's kids, at the very start of adult life. How you do this year will determine what path you take in life. I love my job and every day is different. I love the interaction with the kids. I love the fact that you can see them making progress. There's nothing to match it, nothing to touch it. Dreamed about you. Happy Christmas. I love you, baby. Stephen Drew has been the school's deputy head for the last three years. All our dreams come true. Dum, 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 dum. Yes. Mr. King. Oh, I thought he was there. That shows how much I'm concentrating. I'm too busy singing. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. Steve is so integral to the school, to me being ahead. I would be half as good ahead without him, without a shadow of a doubt. Hello, Jordan. Hello, Lee. Lee? I am disturbed by the sight of your footwear every single day when I see it. He is who he is. This little Sergeant Major character which the kids see is exactly what he is. You know, he's one of those people who lives life really quickly and talks really quickly and walks really quickly. Is he here now? Oh, how does he do You are such a bugger. <laughs> how? I was going to say, how do you do this? You've gone out the window or something. As Mr Goddard's deputy, Mr Drew is in charge of discipline and enforcing the rules. Vic needs somebody who is going to deliver his vision. 
And I think sometimes you need somebody who is slightly kind of, you know, sort of uber focused on everything and is very kind of obsessive about it, who will just then make the things that he wants actually happen as a reality. You may have your phone, you may put your hoodie up at the end of the day. For Mr. Drew, reality starts at 8.40 every morning. Excuse me, young person, come here. Just in case for some reason you have been unable to understand a very, very clear rule of the school that you attend, we do not wear hoodies at this school, so do not do so. You may pick your hoodie up from me at the end of the school day. You appear to have used your hoodie in order to cover up the fact that you have chosen not to do your top button up. Uh, come here. You may go, you may go. You are inside the building. There is no need for you to wear that dead animal. You may have your jacket from me at break and lunch and the end of school each day so as to avoid the ongoing constant conflict that exists over you wearing it in the corridors. As deputy head, my kind of role is the gatekeeper, is the person who is maintaining the standards and the discipline, is the one who's having most of those very difficult conversations. If you step towards him and try and physically attack him, I will restrain you. I don't give a shit. I know you don't. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me! What? I have told you not to speak. He's a bigger bullshitter than me. I've told you not to speak. I always thought Mr Drew, because that everyone does, he is an evil overlord who will completely incinerate you if you annoy him. Put your report back on my desk. Thank you very much. But when I actually had him as history teacher, it's one of them, he's actually quite fun. He's completely insane. Mr Drew can be a legend, but then when he wants to be, he can be really annoying. I, I, you know, I give you credit for your ingenuity and your ability to get around systems. And although you'll probably one step ahead of me, please bear in mind I am always standing right behind you, catching up. And as I catch up, I deal with it. I don't think you're a bad person, Michael, but on this occasion you've been caught, so just accept it, yeah? Michael, thank you very much for your time. I'm sure I will speak to you again at some point, hopefully in more positive circumstances. At the end of the day, I am going to be the brick wall. I am going to be the brick wall. What you want to do is on the other side of the brick wall, and I'm afraid to say I am the brick wall, and you are not going past. Are you ready? Yeah. OK, I'll explain it to you. No, because he didn't say Stop. I had a bre break detention. No, because he didn't say I had Stop. a break detention, so why should I do Stop. detention when I shouldn't even have one? Stop. No, because I'm right. Stop. Oh, my God. Stop. Thank you. Being sent to Mr Drew is often the last resort for pupil discipline. You have ten minutes to serve at lunchtime because you have a cross on your report for your attitude during this lesson. Since Charlotte started in her final year, she's become a regular visitor to the deputy head's office. Charlotte has become increasingly challenging as time has gone by, but has moved to a whole new level as we've moved to kind of the end of year 10, start of year 11, to the point where there have been times when she has just been completely uncontrollable and outrageous in her behaviour. All teachers think they're right. That's what does my head in. And I was trying to explain to Mr Drew the other day that he's not always right. And his voice just goes in through one ear and out through the other. And I tell him all the time, but he still goes off. You will now decide whether or not you wish that to happen. If you don't wish it to happen, then you will refuse to do the 20 minutes at lunchtime. You will walk off from me and you will then be in a whole load more trouble. Or you will decide to do the right thing. There is no more need for us to have a conversation. Yeah, there is. Go and sit down. No, there Go and is, sit down. Why should I do another ten minutes? Go and sit down. Go and sit down. No. Go and sit down. No, you get to talk to us, aren't I? Go and sit down. No, One of the things that is different to today is that the, the boundaries between adults and young people aren't as secure, aren't as solid as they were in the past. You are not sitting properly on the chair. If you do not sit with all four legs on the floor, I will take the chair away from you. I'll sit on the floor. Why don't bother me? A lot of young people do seem to quite struggle with the concept of boundaries. The word no. It is quite clear that some young people just do not understand the word no. Nobody ever tells me in my life I can't do anything. My parents never stop me doing anything. Why is the answer no? And that is something I think that is increasingly difficult with some young people, where they are being failed. They are being failed by their parents. They're being failed by society because they're not learning the idea of no. Come on, sir. Uh, excuse me, Charlotte, I will come when I am ready. Please don't start telling me what to do. Well, I'm standing there like a lemon doing don't. nothing. But if you want to make someone like Charlotte succeed, you've got to give a bit of yourself. You've got to be prepared to let that boundary be broken down. And if you can build out that relationship with that young person, make them trust you and make them believe that at the end of the day, you have their best interests at heart and that whatever they do, 
Tomorrow is another day. To be honest with you, five minutes' time is another day. I do not wish to experience your unpleasantness, so do not make me experience it. <laughs> All right. Am I amused? He's laughing at me. Am I amused? I don't know, are you? Am I amused? I don't know, are you? What well, you think about it? Am I amused? I don't know, are you? Do you think I'm amused? Maybe. Okay, we're doing this until you give the correct answer. <laughs> Will I be amused? I don't know, because I'm not you. Do you think I'll be amused? Have a guess, Charlotte. Do you think I'll, I'll be amused? Maybe. I don't know. Do you think I will be amused? <laughs> oh, my God. Do you think I'll be amused? <laughs> Do you think I'll be amused? So, in the 1890s, along comes this bloke called Bering. Bering was a follower of Cock, so therefore Bering used. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, oh yes, so mature Sam. While Gabby can really hardly hard. control herself, the German scientist bloke taught. Before becoming Bering. deputy head, Mr. Drew was a history teacher. It's a lesson he still teaches for two hours a week. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Actually, that's not bad, to be honest, because that is the third lesson running that I've said cock out loud in a very strong way, and that's the first Sam, time any of you have actually... every time you say it. <laughs> Without wishing to sound kind of flippant about it, a teacher has to entertain. Because at the end of the day, I think of, like, the history lesson I've done this week where we're talking about a 19th century cartoon from Punch about cholera, a waterborne public health disease, and you're spending 40 minutes talking about this cartoon from 180 years ago with a bunch of 16 year olds. I mean, you know, if you look at it like that, dull, I'm just not interested. Now they chose history. And I've seen people do these things and it just becomes so dull. But to me, teaching has got to be about making young people want to learn and letting them learn. Oh, I'm dying, I've got cholera, it's really, really awful. Oh, I know, I'll come and stay in this nice hotel right in the middle of where you all live and then I'll urinate and defecate all over the floor so all my germs and bacteria get out. But don't worry, because when that goes into the ground, the water will leach right into your drinking water and then you can drink all my waste. So why would lodgings for travellers be a problem for public health? So I thought history was going to be quite easy. It's going to be about Nazis, Germany and all of that. But no, but all this medicine, the only medicine I knew about was paracetamol and cowpole. Chadwick has evidence. What evidence can Chadwick give you that poor living conditions make you die? Dirty water. No. Look at the graph. Look at the graph. Look at the graph. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Just had five then. minutes of happy birthday time. Well, it's still going to work. No, <laughs> he's such a grum. Time. Happy birthday time, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> Have you all been nice this lesson? They've been lovely. They always are lovely. The highlight of my day is my hour with my history class. Yeah, yeah. That is the highlight of my day. Yeah. You have no idea how much <laughs> I like teaching you. You have no idea. Mr Drew's amazing. He is probably the, one of the best teachers in this school. The way that he just teaches and it gets stuck in your head so quickly. He's just such a good teacher. If I am a wealthy taxpayer in the 1840s, I don't want to pay for you poor people to have anything. And you're poor because you have too many children, you drink too much, you gamble too much, you smoke too much, and you don't work hard enough. Because you don't know about what? Germs. OK, that's it. Right, can you please make sure there's sheets in your book? I haven't got a book, sir. Unless you're Tom Tamfield, then you've lost your book. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, Mr. Drew. Lauren, say happy birthday to Mr. Drew. Happy birthday, Mr. Drew. Can you remember why you wanted to become a teacher? No. No. If you'd asked me when I was 16, I wanted to be a teacher, no. If you'd asked me why I was a I wanted to be a teacher, no. If you'd asked me in my first or second year of university, why, well, no. I had no great desire at all. And I think as I went for my third year of university, looked around at other things I could do. I enjoyed my subject history, I enjoyed what I did, and I think I just spoke to other people who'd done it already and thought, you know, actually, yeah, I could quite do that.
I throw properly. <laughs> Go to my office. Go to my office. It's just nonsense, isn't it? It's just nonsense. You're not man enough to do it from a distance. You come and stand there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. I want to win, I want to win. It didn't snap. <laughs> yes, sir. You're allowing him to do this? Yeah. Why? Why? Because it makes them happy. Yes, but now this means that every time a member of staff comes out, they're going to throw snowballs at them. Oh! Snowballs down! Bell's got lesson time! Play time's over, learning time started! What were you like at school? <laughs> oh, I was absolutely fantastically, beautifully, wonderfully behaved. No. Um, I think that I was somebody for whom school was an entertainment and a challenge and I think that I just decided I didn't want to be good really. I don't think, I'd, actually that's probably unfair to myself, I don't think I particularly decided, I don't think I really thought about it. Yeah. The pleasure Child, of it, yeah. yeah it's... Stop it, don't. And also don't. the lady who was reviewing um, the... <laughs> the <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> You will never, Get ever be able to do that. Oh, leave, him, leave, him, leave, him, leave 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 him. That's him silent until he's done. That's going to yeah. kill you. Um, I think yeah. uh, the way in which I would describe it is, if I had to deal with myself at 14 or 15 years old, I think I would be getting rid of myself on a very regular basis. I'd be calling my parents on a regular basis, and I'd have me on report, and I'd have me on everything else for the whole time, because I just thought I knew it all, knew all the answers, and just wasn't interested, and that was it. I never knew when to stop. Some people would say I've never changed. Anything else, anybody? No? Don't give me this half term. It's been bloody hard work, I have to say. This is probably one of our the toughest half terms I've had. I don't know about you lot. But the hardcore kids we've got are really fairly hardcore at the moment. Um, so time consuming. They are massively time consuming. I think, like most Year 11s, the vast majority of them just get on with it and just do it and will do really well. I think that there are just a few more who are perhaps more challenging than maybe last year, but not necessarily more challenging than we've had in the past. But I also think we just get better at keeping going with them. Cool, then. Tell me a bit about your behaviour. What about it? Hello, where are you? Despite numerous visits to Mr Drew's office, Charlotte's behaviour has not improved. Why, you're not even left yet? Her obsession with her mobile phone is becoming a flashpoint with staff. Where are you? I think mobile phones are one of the biggest disasters in the modern education system that exists. Absolute disaster in every possible way. They are incapable, lots of young people, of coping with the possession of a mobile phone and doing their education. Completely incapable. Dean has got, oh, safe mate. Ashley's got, why did I agree to this? Because she's gone and done that thing. If they do anything in a lesson whatsoever, they're confiscated. There's no grey areas on that. If the phone beeps because the battery's going low, it will be confiscated. OK, phone and phone now. Phone there and there. my phone. It was. It weren't. It was. My phone's in here. But what was it then? I want it here. It weren't Mason. my phone! Don't shout. Mason. Jesus. Shut I'm not going down this road again. Well, I am. I want your phone. You ain't you having my phone. Shut I'm not going to go through. This again. But you ain't having my phone. If you're you my phone, I'm going. Have you always been like that? No. Oh. Seriously? No, I actually ain't. I don't know. Year 10, I think. No, year 7 and 8, I weren't that bad, but I was bad. But in year 9, I was worse. And then year 10, I was worse. And then year 11, I was worse. No. Is that a word? You see this? You see, look, look at my fingers. You see this? Mm. All right. Now look at me. I really look. No, I want you to look at me. Keep looking at me. Look at me. What? This was how much patience I had for you on Monday. And this is about now, OK? Mm. So do you often end up being isolated? Yeah. Is that your phone again? <gasps> 
she is, you know, this very intelligent young person. She is somebody who is unable to make the right decision, who wants to express herself and the rest of it. But actually, sometimes as an adult and, and as the teacher, you've got to be able to stand there and say, you know something, actually, you need to stop. Because if you don't stop, and if I don't stop you, and if I don't sort of battle you, and I don't stand there and stop you from doing it, you will make a disaster of your life. Shall I tell you something about your life? Yeah. Shall I tell you something? In your life, you will never, ever come up against people who are as calm and patient as we are for the rest of your life. So I suggest that you, at the moment, are simply reinforcing the view that people have of you, which is where people actually say to me on a regular basis, why do you bother? And I spend my whole time telling people, because she's worth it, because she will do well, because actually, deep down, there's a nice, decent young person trying to get out. Yeah. Your attitude but is disgusting. Is, you're talking. Oh. is that the battle, I suppose, for them to accept what you think is acceptable that is different from what they think is acceptable? Absolutely. Absolutely. Battle's an interesting word. I am therefore... You think about a battle, you know, if, you, if you're a sort of military historian and you're studying a battle, battles aren't always 24 hours a day, complete head-on charging into each other. Sometimes battles are actually about planning. Sometimes battles are actually about periods of lull, periods of quiet, and then periods of intensity. So I think battle probably is a good word, but it shouldn't be taken to mean it's a fight the whole time. Give me last week's report. Please do not have left it behind or not got it signed, OK? You've got GCSEs to do, BTECs to do, and any other Uncle Tom cobbly exam under the sun, so... Charlotte's been on report for the last month. With some improvement in her behaviour, she's been handed back to her form tutor. Right, from tomorrow morning, you are going to go and register with Mr Millionova. Now, is registering with Mr Millionova any kind of problem? Yeah. Why? Cos... Cos she annoys you the moment she enters the room. Her breathing annoys you, her face annoys you. No, she just has a go at me all the time. I have a go at you and you don't seem to be annoyed. Mr Goddard has a go at you and you don't seem to be yeah, annoyed. Yeah, but it's not like that. You have a go at me for a reason ah. that I've done. Done something wrong. So Miss Minionova has a go at you and you don't think she should, so what do we do, Charlotte? I've got her back. Shall I give... Sh sh I'll, I'll give you a suggestion for how we're going to deal with Miss Minionova, OK? Miss Minionova has a go at you and you say... OK, Miss, I'm sorry that that thing happened. Yeah, but what if it weren't no, me? No, no, stop, stop. Listen. Is that... OK, Miss, I'm sorry I did it? No. Is that... Quite frankly, Miss, it weren't me. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we could try that one? Yeah. What is it today? The 9th? The 8th, sir. Oh. Don't age me prematurely. We've got a new strategy for Miss Amelia Nova. Charlotte's going back to register Miss Amelia Nova, but every time Miss Amelia Nova says something to her, she argues with her. So this week's strategy for Miss Amelia Nova is when Miss Amelia Nova has a go at Charlotte, Charlotte is going to say, I'm really sorry that that thing happened, Miss. <laughs> yeah? And we've... Discussed how that isn't actually apologising for it, but just apology. says, I'm sorry that the incident happened. Oh, that's so politician like, isn't it? It is regrettable. Try Indeed. It it is is, regrettable. No, don't, no, no, no. Don't say it is regrettable, Charlotte. <laughs> say, impossible. Miss, I'm really sorry that that thing happened. Okay? That will be yeah. this week's strategy, okay? All right. Off you go. All right. Thank, thank you me. very much. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Most students will respond eventually to Mr Drew's advice. But not all. Some are so disruptive, they test the school to its limit. OK, stop. No, no, stop. What, what for you to do stop. That? Because you are 15 or 16 years old, I am 38 years old. Look, anyway, I'm talking... No, to you will talk when I tell you you can. Oh, At the moment, oh, you won't. Dog. I'm looking whenever you want. Yes. Yes. The most difficult students are given what's called a fixed-term exclusion meaning that they're suspended from school for up to a week. I'm looking to student between three and five days, to be honest. OK. Because I think, you know, it needs to be that very, very clear and stark message. But if these measures fail, schools can permanently exclude a child. For Mr Drew, though, expelling a student isn't the solution. When I was at school, there was always that fear of being expelled. So if the school strives for no permanent exclusions, then there isn't that fear in the students. So ultimately, they're always going to win. No. No. Yeah, of course they're going to win. I want them to win. 
but I want them to win. I don't want them to lose. Permanent exclusion is wrong. Wrong. Morally wrong. If I permanently exclude you from this school, you are significantly more likely to be involved in criminal activity, you are more likely to go to prison, you are more likely to fail your qualifications, you are more likely to not succeed. So that's wrong. I'll tell you what, becoming a no-fail organisation is not easy, is it? <laughs> it's going to kill us en route. <laughs> well, you a lot, to be honest. <laughs> and then when he explodes, you'll be covered in body parts and detritus and other stuff that's flying around. Should I tell you what, I, tell you what I worry about all the time, right? So I tell you what really, really worries me, doing like a Channel 4 thing, is that people watch it and they just think we're a bunch of idiots. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Do you know? Just That's kick, just kick just, them out. It's just kicking just, out. And the nice people go, oh, how hard they're working, how hard they're trying, all the rest of it. And then, bloody hell, Michael Gove stands up at the House of Commons and is asked, have you seen what that deputy did? Yeah, man's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, kick He's her out. He's running, just kick her out. This is not what we want in the British education system. That school is the cause of the problem. That I, that's the main thing I worry about with this documentary, <laughs> is that we do everything that our colleagues in education will think is fantastic, great, and all our kind of social... All the rest of it yeah. will think is great. And the greater public watch it and yeah. just think, you're a bunch of fucking idiots. I know. What do they have to <laughs> say to you in order for you to get rid of them? No wonder you have such discipline problems. You're all spineless. <laughs> It's almost the end of term, and the heavy snow is causing problems for the senior leadership team. Joe, do you have anything you used to add to this meeting? I think you should have lots. Mm. Stop Stephen talking, because yeah, he's I on agree. this morning. He's asking eight. He's <laughs> <absolutely> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I have remembered something I wanted to say. I think that on Friday morning, I think on Friday when they line up for the exams, that they shouldn't line up outside because it's too cold, and we ought to get them to gather in the gym and then send them from the gym to the sports hall. I agree. I just, unfortunately, I have had a number of conversations with parents whose hoodies I have, whose hoodies and such like I have confiscated in the last mm -hmm. few days. But I've had a number, one particular parent who just basically said, well, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, my child not being freezing cold is more important than your uniform and you are just inhumane. Said the king to the people everywhere Listen to what I say Take the jumper off and give yeah, it to me. It's going to be cold in the hall. Take the jumper off and give it to me. Thank you very much. Now go and do your exam. Even in the festive season, the school maintain their high standards when it comes to uniform. Sweet. Hold on. You're dressed appropriately. You're not dressed appropriately. Right then, gentlemen, let us move on. have very high standards around certain things, you know, and, and uniform is one of those things where we have a different stance to lots of the other schools in the town. For the community we serve, they have a lot of inconsistency in their life. You know, mum and dad are both working hard, they're looking after themselves or single parents or whatever. There's a lot of, of variation in their lives, which is it's just stressful, you know, change is stressful, inconsistency is stressful. And I think they just found it was, it was consistent. Lovely, Connor, you look stunning. We expect things to be good. We're very intense on attendance, we're very intense on standards generally. So if you choose to be very intense on these things in order to allow the young people to have the best opportunity they can, then you have to accept that things are going to be fairly relentless. It's 8.15 on Wednesday morning. And for Mr Drew, a rule-breaking red hoodie is about to turn his day upside down. OK, stop. You can take it off before you come any further, because I know that it has been a source of great conflict over the last few days. So we'd like to start the day, wouldn't we, Carmelita, without conflict? Yes? All right. Shall we start with conflict? No, exactly. So let's not start with conflict. Don't tell me to shush. She's one of the most challenging young people that we've ever had. Definitely one of the most challenging young people we've ever had, by a long way. Because she has that attitude that I always say that young people have. 
once a young person decides they don't care, and they don't care what you do, you're stuffed. Good. You may have it at break time. Thank you. No, you may have it at break time. Right, then we shall start the day by walking around the school together. No, go away. No, I won't go away. It can be all right sometimes. You can have a laugh with him, but when you're, like, annoyed and he comes up to you and you just... I think it's the way he talks as well. He talks up like sarcastic. So pleased that we're starting the day with conflict, which Carmelita has now chosen. So how to describe it, it's just like something that won't go away. That deep down, just at the moment buried so deep, there's this really kind, caring person. She just can't find it. Oh dear, now you're excluded. OK, that solves that problem. Well, Carmelita, it's entirely up to you because after I've been to my meeting, I will be phoning your mother to inform her that you're excluded. So that's not a very start to the day, is it? Well, if that's your choice in the matter, yes. The penalty for swearing at a teacher is a one-day exclusion. So, yes. Yeah, your choice. It's a lovely hat, but we don't need to wear it. I don't care. Where's your tie? In my pocket. Then let's do all of the uniform things, shall we, Dean? OK, nobody else is allowed to exclude anyone today, because I've already... You've excluded me, Steve. You've excluded yeah. someone before we even yeah. started the day. Yes, that would be Carmelita, because she had her hoodie on, so I said, how about we avoid conflicts and how about we solve the problem and you give me the hoodie? Nice. No, you can just nice piss line. off. <gasps> I said, well, there we go, Carmelita. She said, should I go home now? I said, well, that appears to be the choice that you make, Carmelita, doesn't it? So I shall ring your mum when I have a moment. Thank you very much. Can, can we just keep her off till January now, then? I like her. She's one of my favourites. OK, brilliant, Russell. Then you ring her mum and say, unfortunately, Mr Drew has deliberately caused your daughter to swear at him, but I don't want so to that. exclude her. I'd like her to stay in school and do an English GCSE <laughs> with me. Hi, it's Russell King, assistant head of Passmore. Basically, I'm calling on behalf of Mr Drew because he met Connelly before school started today and asked her to take off her hoodie because she was indoors. Um, and Connelly basically refused. He ended up following her around the school and asked her. Oh, sorry, no, um, so, uh, Mr Drew just tapped me on the shoulder and corrected me on that, sorry. This thing kind of turned into a protracted period of Mr Drew following her around. Um, eventually she just told Mr Drew to piss off. Mr Drew, mm -hmm. she's just told her mum that you pulled her by her shoulder. She can say whatever she wishes to say. At no point whatsoever were I within two metres of her. Hi. I, I did hear that. Mr Drew, um, I just re relayed that to Mr Drew as well, and he said that at no point was he within even two metres of her, so he categorically denies that accusation. Um, I, was, I, was, I was calling to, because um, Mr Drew's in initial instinct was to exclude Carmelita for what she's done, and I said, well, hold on a minute, Mr Drew, um, I've got quite a good relationship with Carmelita, she did a lot of good work for me earlier in the term. However, now that I've heard Carmelita lying about Mr Drew, um, and... I'm, I'm sorry, are you, uh, are you accusing me of that, please? Right, that's the end of this conversation. Goodbye, that's horrifically rude. I absolutely refuse to have anything to do with that woman. She accused me of licking your backside. <laughs> I feel horrendously insulted by this, and I require the head teacher to now take this up on my behalf. School rules dictate that any accusation of assault must be dealt with immediately by Mr Goddard. My job as a head, the first and most important thing is to keep people safe. It strikes at the core of what school's about. You know, parents choose schools because they trust them to do the right thing for their young person. And the very, very worst thing you can do is to, is to put them in an unsafe situation with somebody who's supposed to be trusted. She's got this red hoodie that she wears all the time. Yeah. And if you tell her to take it off, yeah. she either argues and takes it off or does it. But the moment your back's turned, she puts it back on again. Right. She told me to shut up, get lost, and all the rest of it. And she said, well, you can just piss off because I don't want to talk to you about it. I said, fine. In that case, then, you'll be excluded for swearing at me. So she then says to Mum, Mr Drew grabbed hold of my shoulder. At yeah. which point Russell said to her, Mum, clearly, Carmelita has now not only sworn but has also made an accusation of assault against a member of staff. Yeah. OK, look. Thank you. Come here, come in, please.
Do you know what's happened today? I've walked in. Yeah. And then he was just like, kept on coming near me. He's like saying, I'll take your place. I was like, no, I don't want you to. And he just kept on carrying on speaking. I was just like touching my shoulder and that, like trying to bring me back to get my jacket. I was like, get off. Where did that happen? Outside the toilet. Obviously, I need to look on the CCTV footage for that because I take members of staff assaulting students really seriously. And the, the accusation you've made is that he assaulted you, according to your mum. Well, at least I've admitted that I told him to piss off because it was. I'm asking you what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. Have I got member staff that's a dangerous young people who can't control themselves? In which case, I'd need to suspend him, wouldn't I? Can you come and show me where? He said, you make contact with you so I can go and check the CCTV footage, please. So the initial conversation happened sort of down the tech corridor, is that right? It started at this... Sort of down the end there, yeah? Yeah, there. He went like that and his hand was, like, and he just walked to my shoulder. I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, come back in. And then I turned around and he's just, like, put his arm out. Like, what are you doing? I was just like, well, no, so I've got his arm out or grabbed you or made contact. I can't, you need to give me exactly what happened because obviously I've got a camera there which will see it quite clearly and a camera at the far end that will see it quite clearly. So, that little red No, the black circle, that black circle there and that black circle up there. Yeah, because obviously that was locked at the time and then I was like, man, and he's got his arm out and he went like that. He was just like, swiped it down and I went, sir, what are you doing? So he did or he didn't make contact? Yeah, he went like that. Right. And I was just like, sir, what are you doing? For the pupils and the staff's protection, the school has its own network of CCTV cameras. Hi, mate. Um, can I review something on the CCTV camera? It's a Channel 10 camera between 8.35 and about 8.45. We're looking for Drury. Coming in that direction towards the camera. There. That's it. 9.14. There's no contact at all there, is there? Come on, come in, please. Right hand screen. Remains a couple of metres away. No contact at all. It's not that I don't believe you, I can't believe you, because it's not true. It's quite simple, photographic evidence, we can go to court if we need to. Come back round. Close the door for me. Hi, it's Mr. Goddard. Hi, yeah. Uh, um, I've got young Carmelita with me. Um, just going through, obviously she's made an accusation against a member of staff this morning, so I've just, I've just been through that with her. We've just reviewed it on CCTV footage. We've got the whole incident. Mr. Drew wasn't within arm's reach of her at any time. No, no problem. I took her seriously, and, you know, please ask her, you know. I took her seriously. I take all accusations like that seriously. I've looked at the camera. I've, I've looked at the cameras all the way around. Um, Followed it around, but there was no contact at all. Yeah. Obviously, she needs to she needs to come home, and we'll see her in January. Sorry. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Why was I lying about someone touching me? There was no contact, Carmelita. He hasn't assaulted you in any way. You made a false accusation against a member of staff. Like well, that's what your mum. Well, that's what your mum said. So that's all I can deal with. You, you, your mum's your adult. The mum's the adult in this situation. She will only react to what you say. Now, you can try and deflect from the fact that your behaviour is unacceptable by making accusations against staff. However, I will always look at them seriously because my job is to keep you safe. I do feel I keep you safe, and actually the unsafe person is you. Your behaviour is unsafe because if you make accusations against staff, their futures are on the line. Their mortgages, their houses, their families. And I don't accept that that can ever happen. And I'm disgusted. You try and ruin somebody's life by doing that, Carmelita. It's not good enough. Thanks. Go home. Don't want to see you till January. That's exactly what I just said.
Oh my god. What a morning. I'm just gonna sort out your tie, yeah? Crest below the knot. Yeah, I've just the head teacher peanutted you there. There you go. Morning ladies, afternoon, I mean. You alright, Luke? Right. Gosh, Hi. it's hot in here, isn't it? Cameron Baker, it's Cameron Baker, you've done your time, you can go now. No, you're doing half an hour, you can go. Cameron, follow you, just get up and go. You've actually got five more minutes to do, OK? But you know something? I just need to talk to Mr Goddard. Ah. If you want, Cameron, you can come back and do it later. Do you want to come back and do it later? No. No, sir. No, sir. Cameron, do you get the point of what I said to you yesterday? Yes. Are you sorry? Yes. Bye-bye. See you later, Cam. Following an allegation against Mr Drew, head teacher Mr Goddard has spoken to the pupil's mum. I phoned her up and said, just to let you know, I've taken Carmelita's accusation of assault by Mr Drew very seriously. I've spoken to her, I've taken a statement, I've reviewed the footage on CCTV, and unfortunately, your daughter's lying. Well, fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate, unfortunately, thanks. Unfortunately for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you accuse you doing? Pushing her. Well, it's funny, cos it came from grabbing her through to pushing her through to, yeah, he did that as I went past, and I was like, OK. It is a worry that there is always the potential that some malicious allegation is going to cause problems. But then, that can happen to anyone. People lie. You know, children lie, adults lie, people lie. And if you spend your entire life saying, I'm never going to put myself in a situation where someone can lie about me, then you're not going to do anything. So I'm not going to blame Carmelita for that. She, she, she does the wrong thing, fine, we move on, she makes her apology eventually. In the end of the day, she will finish with eight GCSEs. We will be on our knees and need to sleep for the whole of August as a result, but she'll have passed it all. I was almost delirious today. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't be cross, I couldn't be angry, I couldn't be anything. You know what Joe Els did yesterday? Which basically killed me at the end of the day. Obviously, period five had to go and teach. And about 15 minutes later, turns up in, I'm not sure who's, oh, Bex Conway or, or Anna Ferdinando's lesson with one of those plastic cups. What's he got in it? That would be some of my smoothie out of the fridge. <laughs> I knew you bloody love. I was absolutely no, outraged. Hasn't. Honestly, Vic, I was... At, I, tell you what, of all the things that's happened in the last two days, that's pissed me off more than anything, that has. Absolutely pissed me off more than anything. Oh, that really did me. That's it. Steve is just... What he does amazes me at times, his work ethic, his passion, his willingness to be kicked and get up again. It's something that you can't really measure. He's remarkable. Right, now, who's this for, are you? Oh, what luck! <laughs> <laughs> it's the final senior team meeting before Christmas. Might be a personal good idea. Yeah. Good idea, mate. What have you got? Wash and wax. Oh, excellent. And a chamois leather. Is that what you asked for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hardly secret, girls, is it? It's hardly a secret, <laughs> Santa. Thanks. Is it? Thanks, Nat. Someone's laughing already. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good sign. <laughs> Oh, yes! What is it? I can't say. <laughs> it's a designer beaver. A designer beaver. <laughs> <laughs> These people run a school! These people run a school! <laughs> I think one of the things that I believe about our school is that it is a happy place. It is a place where people come. It is a place where I think young people can feel safe, can feel trusted, can feel believed. And I think it's a school where we are prepared to do anything to go to the next level and the next level and the next level again in terms of what needs to be done. I like young people. I find them interesting. I find them exciting. I find them invigorating. I just think it's so grotesquely hypocritical of adults in the modern age to say that young people today are worse. They're not worse. They are a product of what we as a society create, and they have less opportunity to be children. And the bells are ringing out for Christmas 
So yes, it's hard work, but why is hard work a bad thing? Hard work is surely what makes people better. So yeah, it's hard work, but okay, good. Thank you, I like hard work. This week, two students from different ends of the academic spectrum. I'm not wasting my time with maths, there's no bloody point in it. Each of them in different ways struggling with bullying. Fat boy. Fat boy. Gabby is an A-star student, picked on for being perfect. I've not done anything to her. Sam is a rebel who can't seem to stay out of trouble. I've got a parent who's apparently on her way down here to sort you out. I don't purposely go out of my way to start arguments and randomly punch people anymore. I didn't mean it this to happen. <laughs> Every child has a right to be safe in school, and no child, regardless of how bad they might think their life is, has the right to stop another child feeling safe. It's just wrong. I'm very, very sorry, sir, but I need your help with another matter now. We can go with his version of events. Jake swore at me, so I said, can you stop swearing at me? And he said, no. Then he started to hit me with a box, so I said, stop, please. And he said, no. He then he chucked the masking tape at me in the face, so I chucked it at him. And then the bell rang. I started to go to lesson. He pushed me over, so I pushed him over. He started to punch me. He pushed me, and I pushed him. I pushed him to the floor, and I punched him seven times in the face. This young man, sir, is turning into a violent sociopath and is pleased with his violence towards another student. And he himself has written seven punches in the face. My office. My office. All schools have bullies and it's how you deal with it and if you accept it or not and the stance you take, you know, and we're very clear that we don't accept bullying. That's disgusting. I'm not saying he should grab you or even touch you, he shouldn't do that, but to respond in biting. If I hear anything from anyone, we will act on it and we will take you out of lessons and put you somewhere where we will have to keep an eye on you until you stop threatening. At school there's like the popular people, the people that are really cool sort of thing. And then there's like the nerdy people. I'd say I'm a nerd, that's, that's what most people call me. 14-year-old Gabby was elected head girl last month. Since then, she's been bullied by a group of girls who used to be her close friends. Um, I'd offer you a tissue, but I've got an empty box. What's happened? It's, it's gone on for so long, that everyone that's been horrible to me, not everyone but that, they've been bullying me and everything. Well, they just started leaving me out that ages ago, but... Turn around and called you a bitch. Then that, that's bang out order and that's bullying. Okay, so we'll probably have to write a statement so you need to be clear on what's happened. Hello, Gabby, come in. Head teacher Mr. Goddard calls Gabby to his office. It's difficult, isn't it? Because bottom line, everybody wants to be popular. And unfortunately, Sometimes you can buy popularity, mm. and I don't mean by money. I mean mm. by you know joining in a bit of yeah. a bit of girly bitching or yeah. spreading rumours. That's rumors. what it's like, and it, it's just like who do who can I trust who you anymore? Trust, yeah. This one night they were saying how stuck up I am, and and I've sort of built up like a strong exterior of so people I don't look like I've been hurt, but I I just got to like the limit. So they expect me to every day come in and be happy with them because they're being horrible to me. Yeah. Like, that's my way of dealing with it. I don't want to talk to them and I don't want to smile at them. They have to learn that actually going out of your way to be spiteful isn't the way to be in life. It just makes you so angry. It's been, I said to your mum the other day on the phone, it's been going on too long. Yeah. Okay, it has, and we have to deal with it, okay? Mm -hmm. As much as that will probably make you uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it's you and you don't want any fuss made, and I know that. <laughs> 
it can't continue. Thank you. Poor thing. She's been remarkably focused. I look at the difficulties that she's had, and for most kids, there would be a huge tailing off in their involvement in school, wanting to be here, you know, but Kelly's still here doing sports and still working really hard in lessons, and she's not the norm, I would say. You know, that's quite a remarkably strong girl. Question 82. Which deadly disease returned to Europe in the 17th century? Anyone? The plague. Plague. Gabby is just the ultimate do the right thing student who just gets on with it. You know, if you could bottle her and copy her for everyone else, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Very good. Well done, Ben. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the problems that young people who choose to be perfectly behaved and totally focused and work hard face is that other young people don't, some young people don't like it. They don't like the fact that they are being shown up to not be hardworking enough. And, as we know, they will turn on the person who they see as the goody two-shoes, who they see as the person who, who will do all the right things. And that, you know, that's something that's gone on since time immemorial. It's 8.30. Dean Michelle, bring me your hoodie. Thank you. No, Connor, hand it to me nicely without throwing it at me. Thank you, Connor. Billy Beddle, come here. Overnight, there's been a worrying development for Gabby. As she was going to bed, and this morning, she received several text messages from an unknown number. I didn't know who it was. Then, just as I was about to get dressed, they sent another one. I was like, oh, no, they're watching me or something. Gab uh, oh, actually, I'll come round. Cheers. Gabby reports the incident to her head of house, Mr Domain. Do you know the whole situation that we did have with Gabby Burton and the other girls? Mm -hmm. Well, she had some texts last night from a number she didn't recognise, mm -hmm. um, basically saying, we're watching you, you look lovely when you're sleeping. Now, she was really worried and I've said, you know, you're in the safest place possible here. I said, nothing can happen to you in school. I said, I'll check with Mr Joe and Mr God, but I think your mum should ring the police. Mm -hmm. I've tried to ring the number, the number is in operation, and I've rung it from the school phone, so it's obvious that the school have rung now. But I just wanted to make sure I'd given her the right advice. Okay. Where's the telephone number? Why? I'm going to point out to them that this is the telephone number and that we are recommending that they go to the police and that we will obviously provide clear supporting evidence that this is an ongoing campaign of harassment. My immediate thought process is, oh God, please no. I just don't, well, you just don't want it to be true because you don't want someone like Gabby to have to put up with it. But we've had instances where actually the mobile phone number has been got from somewhere and the kids are getting very unpleasant text messages of a quite threatening or sexual nature, which have actually not come from anyone to do with school but have come from outside. Good morning. I'm not aware of the person who this phone is, but this is Mr Drew, Deputy Head Teacher at Passmores. You may wish to be aware your number is currently being given to the police, so therefore please be aware that you can expect to receive a visitation or a call from the police at some point in the next 24 or 48 hours since your mobile phone has been used for the harassment of one of the young people who attend my school. Thank you very much. that we don't accept bullying. We'll do anything we can to, to try and change that. But I think that the, the definition of bullying is such, is such a difficult line to walk. That We have got some young people who, who find relationships difficult, have social issues that means that they sometimes say things to people that aren't pleasant. Or does that make them a bully? No, I don't think it does. That's just a part of their makeup that could be perceived at that. Year 11 student Sam is one of the school's more temperamental teenagers. Sam Hatcher Staines. Oh, who is Sam Hatcher Staines? I think Sam is... 
Sam upsets me. You've just behaved in a rather challenging, intimidatory, threatening manner. How? Because you're having a go at me. Then what's the point of me staying around here? Why won't you go into PE? Can't be asked. Can't be asked. Brilliant. Sam's a bit of an oddball. That's just a simple plan to write. Just that. There is no individual way to describe Sam. Sam is Sam. It's the only way you can describe him. He's absolutely mad. He's just... <laughs> Hello. If you look at Sam now in Year 11 and you haven't seen him previously, he looks like a disaster, to be honest. I think from the outside, he looks like a disaster. I just enjoy being different. I don't enjoy being like everyone else because if I was like everyone else, it'd just be boring. Sam is in the bottom stream of Year 11. Right, how do you do lowest terms? Divide by a common factor. What number goes into 18 and 40? Two. Two. It's maths that he struggles with the most. So what do we get when you divide by two? You do it to me. Is there a number that goes into nine and 20? Apart from one. So I can't even read that. OK. So I'm going to put a whole bunch up here. This is going to help you with your times tables, your dividing and lowest okay, terms, yeah. OK? Hello. I'm not wasting my time with maths. There's no bloody point in it. I am never going to need to use maths. OK. I'm not holding your hand to do the work for the third time. You're going to have a detention, aren't you? Don't bother me. Right. Lowest terms. Ow. So I'm not having it. What? You're not doing any work again. I until, until you decide to do work in this lesson, you're going to be isolated with Mr. Yeah, Westwood please. or somebody. I've got a pen now. You have to write in your book. If you do not write, write in your book, you will not be in this lesson. Oh, I cannot be more specific with you. The fact that Sam has struggled academically has no doubt affected his self-esteem. As he's grown into a young man, he doesn't want to be seen to fail. Um, and therefore, that's the easiest way to avoid failing, is to avoid doing it in the first place. All right, come on in. I'm really sad that we've got to this position. I've been up to the class. The class is working brilliantly, <laughs> I have to say. Look at what a difference it makes when everybody's trying. So I can't afford for you to stop that happening. I can't afford for you to let other people fail. So you've got to help me. Yeah? Equations. This is a really tough part of maths. Do you want to go through some examples with me? See how we are? Sure. Yeah? OK. The whole thing with equations is to get x on its own. I want to get that x on its own. So I'm left with x on this side and 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is... Three times table. Three. Six, nine, twelve, four. OK, that's the answer. Let's look at the next one. At times, for like, my life's not going anywhere. I'm miserably failing at school. And there's not really much point of continuing on. I'm just going to stay in my room and hibernate for the rest of my life. You know, I can compare you back to the toe rag when you were in year eight and year nine and think, God, what a long way we've come. Can't I? No. <laughs> I had a horrible time when you were in year nine. I wouldn't be having such a nice conversation with you back then, I can assure you. You'd have been no, sitting there sulking and kicking things, wouldn't you? It was worse than year eight. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you've come such a long way, all right? And it's such a shame that you seem to pick and choose who you, who you have a good relationship and who you have a difficult relationship with, yeah. OK? He's up, he's down, he's left, he's right, and he's hiding behind this huge, loud exterior of shouting all the rest of it. And actually, deep down, he doesn't really want to do that. He just wants to get it right, but he doesn't know how to. So you need to help him to. Sir, mm. I feel like crying for no reason. Is that normal? Um, what, your age? Yeah. So I have nothing to be scared of? That's good. <laughs> no, sometimes it's overwhelming, isn't it? Isn't it, miss? The urge to cry, sometimes it just comes. Oh, it does. Oh, I always cry. Although nothing bad. That's why people like. choose to watch sad films. Indeed. Because Indeed. that then gives them an excuse to get it all out of the system. Yeah, that's true. But really, it's just the pain of man screaming yeah. against the moon. Oh, um, Mary Poppins. Hmm? Mary Poppins. <laughs> yes, yeah, a good idea, yes. <laughs> or Chitty Chitty Bam Bang. Chitty Chitty Bam Bang, Chitty Chitty Bam Bang, we love you. I used to fucking love that film. I look at him and I think, you're a really nice kid. 
you have a lot of potential, but you push people away. And I just look at him and I think, you've come so far, you could do so well. And I just really worry about whether or not he will. Go. All right, clear off, scumbags. Then we've got in the car. How far does the car go in about five minutes? Me, 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 me pick me. Oh. No, you're not, and uh, Miss Miss Burton. I know. I, I, you you are expressing how most of us feel. You know, Mr. Drew obviously thinks it's as serious as we did. Um, so there, there's, we will do everything we can to try and put a stop to it. So the school is continuing to investigate the anonymous text messages. Gabby is being kept out of lessons while they try to find out who is responsible. That morning was really scary for us because we didn't know who it was. There was like, such a wide range of people that like, could have done it. Oh, I'll give you a ring once I found out if Mr Juice found anything out, OK? Thank you, Mrs Burton. Bye. It's the same number. Mm. That's very strange. Why is she, Chloe Walker? The text said, Gab, it's Chloe. I just, like, stared at my phone. I, I didn't say anything, like, when you, I couldn't put what I felt into words when I read the text. Knowing that the text messages come from a pupil in the school, Mr Domain alerts the deputy head. Is Chloe Walker in here? With me, please. 13-year-old Chloe is a friend of Gabby's from the year below. I cannot even begin to think of a reason why you would do it. We've got a young person who is absolutely committed and dedicated to being the best that she can possibly be, working incredibly hard, doing everything possible, standing for head girl, making all those speeches, getting elected, representing herself and us as a community outstandingly well, who is being treated unfairly, first of all, by some of her own peers or friends, which we have put a stop to and now by somebody else who thinks it's funny. There is currently a 21-year-old woman in this country who's in prison for harassment of one of her friends on Facebook. It is no joke whatsoever, at all. Go and sit on the bench outside. Chloe's mother, Sam, works as a teaching assistant at the school. Oh, what's the matter? Mr. Drew says Gabby's mum's finding a bling. <laughs> Sorry, I've just walked past on route and been filled in with half of the story. Let's go in here. I can base my judgment on what course of action to follow on the fact that I know full well that <laughs> anything I do will be around 10% of what you will do. <laughs> So I am perfectly happy to leave that one in your hands. However, to some extent, whilst not wishing to be unpleasant, she needs to sweat on the fact that she's about to get a criminal conviction and the police come around to the house. And, sorry, I know that's really unpleasant, but I think she needs a bit of time to think. So I'll leave you with her okay. when you feel that she's ready to return. Morning. She's now cracking her pants because Gabriella's mum might be phoning the police and having the police in and having her done for harassment and the school will well, back them. Well, I had to them. prison. That was one of them I really hate myself. And now the one says, time to get ready for school, I know what's called. So that's this morning, that's not even last night. Time to get ready for school, I know what school you go to. Show me another one, please. <laughs> I can see your bedroom. I like it. It's very unique. Um, That's at quarter past ten last night. I know what um I know how like what, what bedroom she's got because I've seen it on Facebook. Made all the year ten. Oh no! I'm going to run away. Right, I've seen you when you're sleeping. You're Please don't need to write that. Right, leave it with me and I'll sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Grace is Chloe's older sister and is the year above Gabby. Mum, can I speak to Gabby? No. <laughs> right there. Yes. Someone's going to be sick. Sorry? Right. I'm going to be sick of being... <laughs> Whilst I don't condone what she's done, yes. and I'm not trying to pass over the blame, <laughs> she's actually now just informed me that Grace gave her the number and Grace told her what to write in some of them, so I don't necessarily think that Grace should be getting away so no, free. No, absolutely she should not. You're doing well today, aren't you? <laughs> you really just think, you know, why did I even get up this morning? <laughs> I blame parents all the time. Oh, it's <laughs> Mr. Drew goes to collect Grace. Right. Good morning, Mr. Reader, sir. Uh, Grace Walker, please. With all your stuff, there's no way you'll be coming back. In. And perhaps you would like to repeat what you have just told me to your mum and to your sister. That I said it first and then told her to stop. You are a liar. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. First of all, both of you look at me. Do you want to know why this is difficult for me? The person sat in the chair. That's why this is difficult for me. This isn't difficult for me because of you two. I'm sorry, but it's not. This is difficult for me because one of my colleagues, who I respect and value, is now having to sit and listen to her children, who have been involved in grotesquely unpleasant behaviour, basically trying to squirm out of it. That's why this is difficult for me. So, since you are the older one, who apparently has on your blazer, peer listener, anti-bullying counsel, peer mentor, which apparently means that you are trained to be a responsible young person to listen to other people's problems, let's have a major outbat of the truth, shall we? So who comes up with the words that go in the text? She does. Both of us. No, it was you. You said to me to say, I said, um, what's my put? And you used like, saying you can see her sleeping or something. Well, I did it. And you I did. Said, oh, OK, and then I put it. OK, fine. Bottom line is, you sent it, you chose to send it, you decided to send it, and you should know better. Your mum works here. That puts a special little burden on you, whether you like it or not not to embarrass her. You have let yourself down. I shall leave you. When you're done, please feel free to send them off. OK, thank you. There's no point sitting there crying. It's done. <laughs> there have been certain developments in Sam's world recently. has a new girlfriend, Helen. Bye, I love you. Bye, I love you. I think she takes the edges off him. I think she stops him from being as bad or as rough as he could be. I think she keeps him on the street. He's seen something better since he's been with her. Much better, she's been a good influence on him. But she can only do so much. Mm -hmm. Do you tell each other you love each other and mm -hmm. things like that? Yeah. So is he quite a soft romantic at heart? Yeah. Shall I just talk about the exam? You're going to be doing a citizenship exam on Monday the 13th of December in the afternoon. So we need next lesson to really, really get a move on and go round, put these posters up, get our petitions done, see what people think. Sarah, have you got scissors and glue? In Sam and Helen's citizenship class is Dean an old friend of Sam's. <laughs> Man and Dean's friendship is messed up to the highest limits there possibly is. We can have laughs together, but it can also push me past the limit. It can be very annoying sometimes. Helen is a problem. He didn't want me hugging her all the time. But I'm a huggy person. I hug everyone. And he just said to me, I don't want you hugging my girlfriend again. Stay away from her. Tension was building very badly, was. I'm thinking of going blonde. Did it suit me? No. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm moving. Shh. 
I really want to kick out all these punts here. Why? It really gets my nerves. Do you struggle to control your temper? Don't struggle to control my temper, but it's just sometimes when I wake up in a bad mood and something just pushes me a bit too far. Fat boy! Fatty, fatty, boom, boom. Snidey song commenced. They think you don't hear him, but you do. I've never described myself as a bully. I don't purposely go out of my way to start arguments and randomly punch people anymore. Can you make sure that maybe you put in pencil on the back your name or make sure that it goes in your folder? Move it. Right. Sam and Dean's bickering continues to escalate. Fucking want to start our game. Uh, back. Oh, stop. He's going around spreading shit, saying I'm scared of him. I'm scared of no one. Dean reports the incident to Mr. Drew. Okay, let's just fill you on on everything that's gone on. Sam Hatcher Staines walked past me on D stairs and said, keep on bullshitting and I'll kick your head in. I replied, you keep on, I'll get my family on you. He had started to walk away, but then turned and pushed me hard using both hands into the wall. Miss Roberts stood between us. And to quote Sam Hatcher Staines, that is what happened. And if Miss Roberts hadn't been there, he'd have beaten the shit out of him right there and then. Could you be so kind as to explain to me, Sam, why yes. you feel the need to be having this <laughs> argument with Mr. Horton? What are you on about? I don't understand what's amusing. I've got a parent who's apparently on her way down here to sort you out. Ah, uh, she can come if she wants. I'll fr put on her arse. I'm sorry, but have you heard what he's been saying to me for the Excuse last couple me. of weeks? Excuse me. What is the cause of the current conflict between yourself and Dean? It all started off with him trying to split me and Helen up. He thinks that Helen likes him because Helen's one of them people that will try and get along with everyone, but he pisses Helen off. Then yesterday he started mouthing off like you. And you haven't been making any personal comments about Dean whatsoever? No. You seem to delay your answer to that one, Sam. No, he's been accusing me of making comments by Ah. Him. And what comments is he accusing you of making? Apparently I've been calling him Fat Fat Boom Boom when I've actually been singing Chit Chit Bam Bam We Love You because I was watching the movie night before that. So everything I say, he's been turning it and twisting it. Right. So you're absolutely going to tell me, swear down blind brother or whatever other phrase you want to use in your kind of youth speak of the world against old people like me, you're going to tell me that you have not said anything which he could interpret as being personally abusive. No. It's period two and the school's dealing with Chloe and Grace, who sent Gabby the prank text messages. You are both in a big heap of trouble. If Gabriella's mum phones the police, you can kiss goodbye to any chance of working with children. I want to work with children anyway. You could possibly kiss goodbye any chance of working in a school or any establishment that has children in it. I don't want to work with children anyway. Do you understand how serious this is? Yes. Because I don't think you do. I do. It, what, did she do it to be horrible? I just they think, they think they're funny, don't they? They just funny. think they're funny. Once or two, you could do something once, maybe in the middle of it's yeah. funny. Yeah, and then, like... Let's go on and on. Yeah. And also, after about an hour, go, ha-ha, it was yes. me, you know, or yeah. something and like that. And then Grace, who has a peer mentor, active listener, anti-bullying counsel on her blazer, which doesn't need more, because I've taken them all That's from her. Do you want me to put them in my collection of <laughs> yeah. removed badges from Key Stage 4? <laughs> Um, I made her remove her Victorian. I made her remove her V and A badge as well. <laughs> I said, remove all the badges. <laughs> what do you think people are going to think of me because of what you have done, both of you? In society, when kids are being little shits, everybody goes, "Must be their parents. Must be the way they've been brought up." I work here. I know that I'm not stupid. But obviously, you are stupid, Grace to have got involved in this in the first place. I don't, I'm really disappointed by that. That's, that's mm. unpleasant behaviour. Mm. No, she's, um, I, I get the very clear impression that their, um, their oh, lives yeah. may be coming to a very quick well, well end done, this six, evening. Six. The bottom line is, now at the moment, I am sitting here 
at work, embarrassed, horrified, and waiting to find out whether both of my children are going to get a criminal record. To say I'm not happy is an understatement. What does that mean? It's not strong enough words. Mm. Yeah, I felt sick, really sick, and spent most of the afternoon with my head in a bin. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I felt really bad on Gabby. Everyone was asking me questions in class and things, if I'd found out anything. Obviously, I know, but I didn't want to say anything. It was, like, at the back of my mind and everything I was doing that day. It isn't finished. I know. Is it finished for today? I don't know. I don't know any more than you, Chloe. That's the whole point. Why? Stop shouting at me. Oh. Why do you think they've done it? Because they can. I don't think they set out to be deliberately nasty and unpleasant. I just think, unfortunately, they don't realise that a text message is there in black and white on the screen. It's not the same as saying something. And a family have then got the evidence they need to go to the police and say that's harassment, that's cyberbully, whatever else. And that's how I do sometimes think that kids suffer a bit more today than they did in the past, because 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they would have just said it and that would have been it. And, OK, it would have been unpleasant, but now, of course, everything's there, be it Facebook, mobile phones, all the rest of it. Well, you can't ignore it. You have to deal with it. It's not only cyberbullying that the school has to deal with. Dean's mum and sister are waiting in reception. Who are we seeing? I don't know, we're waiting. Mr Drake. Where is it? Where's Mr Drake? Hello. Hi, Mr Drake. Do you want to come down this way? Right, this situation with Sam has mm -hmm. been ongoing for a few weeks now. Mm -hmm. Dean only told me myself about it last week. Mm -hmm. I've had trouble getting him back into school, and as you can see, his attendance has gone up. Yes, but it's gone But it's going down. back down again. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dean admitted to me that he'd called him a, a P-R-I-C-K on Saturday. Mum, you don't have to spell it out. It's OK, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, Dean, it's do you know respect. something? So, see what, OK? That's exactly what my mum would do. It's yeah. exactly what my it's mum would respect. do. OK? Uh, to be quite honest with you, if he does hit, hurt Dean again, lays a finger on Dean, I will go round to his mum's house. And then when his mum is hurt or something's wrong with his mum, and he asks why, I say, every time you hit Dean, I'll hit your mum. Cos... Is that it's fair? It, yeah, but Kerry, right? No, it's, no not. it's not fair. You can't... You can't say that to me. You can't say to me that if something happens in school district, you'll come down and you'll do this, this and this. No, because I what know. will then happen is, I will end up having to call the police, and... You, and you'll end up the one who ends up being arrested or the ones who end up being exactly. charged with assault. So assault. I end up being the victim yeah. when yeah. he moves the victim. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you're angry. Yeah, I am fucking angry. Really fucking angry. You don't need to go. You don't need to go. She's going to cry. That's, that's will she, she, will she just go to reception? Yeah, she's just going to I'm saying is I don't, I don't need to send someone out to No, she's going to go and cry. No, that's fine. And look, I, I say, in order for us to be able to solve this and your sister to not have to go through what she's clearly going through, maybe you need to be the one who just, when somebody comes to you and says, what do you think of Sam? Oh, you need to whack him one. Just, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you as well. It right. does make sense. No, 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 I know, and I completely, I do understand. I do understand. Yeah, where are you going? Miss Sumption's looking me to give us some love, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. I'm going that way anyway. <laughs> Dean Horton's gone and got mouthy to me again. He's got his mum down here. If she goes mental at me, I'm actually going to put her on her ass. I ain't scared of nothing nowadays. You ain't scared of nothing? What's your name? Why? What's it to you? Is your name Sam? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Jesus Christ, man, you've got a bad attitude. Don't talk to me like that. Do you know who I am? No. No? Well, you should know who I am. I'm Dean's sister. You mess with Dean and you mess with me, yeah? So why don't you just turn around and walk back that way? before I get you and your little friends, yeah? Now, jog on. Go on, run along. Go on. Run. Go on, see ya. Like I'm scared of you. Yeah, well, you will be, I tell ya. You really will be. Helen, don't talk to me like that. Like I said, you don't know who I am. You don't know who I am? Well, I know who you are. You're the one who keeps picking on me, brother. I've come down here to... Excuse see me, you he's the one who keeps uh, threatening to kill me. Oh, what really? do you think I'm going to do? Well, I just want, at the moment, I want it to stop. And I want Dean to come to school. And I want Sam to leave him alone. That, that is what I want. Shh. 
She, she, no, she I thought Kerry was around with someone like that, because I've just heard someone uh, raise their voice outside. She, she's fine. She's, she's fine. very hormonal, <laughs> Kerry. It's so. fine. It's absolutely fine. She's Send me you. away. Excuse uh, me. I have to manage. You shouldn't be in reception right now. So can you please move away and come back later? Why should I do what you because say? Because I've asked you to, please. <sighs> Although, yes, we've had some. I'm really sorry. Can I just borrow just for one minute, oh, please? Oh, do apologise. Must be something very, very desperate. I do apologise. Thank you. Sam, apparently, has just been in reception having a row with his sister. Oh, God. Hello? Where's Sam Hatch Staines? Kerry ain't done nothing, you see. Right, OK, fine. Um, I need you to locate... Oh, for God's sake. What? Where are you going? I'm walking outside the school. Come back. No, I'm going forth back. Can you come back after? Maybe. See, that makes things worse, Sam. Just come back after. Oh, yeah, so I'm going to go back in and get talked to like that by a little skit. I love you too. I didn't realise, obviously, I've never met the boy. It was rather amusing, cos he was saying, uh, Dean's got his mum up here, Dean's got his mum up here, blah, blah, blah. OK, in a sense, to some extent, whilst obviously you don't want that to happen, it could be quite, you know, a potentially good thing to have happened, because it kind of gives you that little moment of kind of sense of where you are yeah. and what's happening. So as much as obviously I did my level best to avoid it, unfortunately, clearly, all of our efforts to avoid things don't always work, OK? I mean, if the attitude he's got and the way he just spoke to that lady out there, I couldn't imagine what his mum and dad have to deal with every day, cos he's rather good. rude. Hello. So, at the end of the day, oh, I understand Monday. completely, obviously, you know, we've had kind of quite a difficult conversation, so like, but in the scheme of things, it ends up being a very worthwhile period of time for us to at least have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah? I just wish Dean was tough enough to just give him a black eye, but... As you keep saying, I keep saying. I you on the hand! But when you hit right. the lock back, they leave okay. you alone after that. Bullying has such a strong connotation People are constantly fearful that, you know, their child's been bullying or their child is a bully. And actually, these things are very, very rarely cut and dried. They're very, very simple, just black and white. Well, this person's bad, this person's good. To be honest with you, I think Sam's going to have to go yeah. for the whole week because I can't have him here. He can't be here. Oh, no, I agree. He cannot yeah. be here. Gabby arrives at school. Hello. Reassured that the anonymous text messages were a prank, she's catching up with one of her favourite teachers, Miss Cunningham. What on earth? I haven't even spoken to you about the text message situation. Does the girls happen? who did it, I'm really close with them. Yeah. I, I am, honestly. Like, we were all surprised we really... that they were the ones that did it. Because I think they're really nice, and, like, ever since I've been in, like, the same form as them, we have been really close. Yeah. We sit right next to each other and we always joke with each other. It was just a joke that went too far, was it? They weren't deliberately trying to upset no, you. I don't think they were. All <laughs> right, well, make sure you keep telling me if, obviously, yeah, yeah. if things get bad yeah. again, make sure you I do, think, but you're, you're doing great. Thank you. All right, all right, no problem. I'll see you soon. Grace and Chloe are in Mr Drew's office. As punishment for sending the text messages, the sisters are being isolated from their friends and their classes for the whole day. All right, Chloe, Grace, come here, please. In the end, Gabby's family did not involve the police. You both need to complete these. You need to complete them from beginning to end. Every single line needs to be filled in. When you have completed, you are to bring it to me here. I think sometimes things can be taken too far. But, um... I don't know. Like, what Chloe did was too far. Like, one text I see you and then say that it's you is all right, cos that's funny. But then carrying <laughs> it on for the next morning is a bit out of order. Cos I am. I think it was due to the fact that I got bullied so much back in year eight, which is the thing that turned me aggressive. 
I think due to the fact that I've been told all these things, oh, I'm pathetic, I'm a waste of space, there's not much point of me, etc. that may have lowered my self-esteem. Sam in here, please. OK, just have a seat, please. I made two promises to my mum. Promise number one was not to get in trouble with the police and that I would stay in school, not get excluded, not get kicked out. I'm excluding you for the rest of the week. Come on, sir. Can't be isolated for the rest of the no. week. No. I'm excluding you for the rest of the week. I'm not prepared to have you in school. We've sorted the whole thing out now. So well, we now. hopefully. I went outside of school, calmed down. Dean's mum came over, spoke to me, got the whole thing sorted out. We are still at a situation where you have made clear threats of physical violence against another young person. No, no, so, so I do not want to be excluded. Well, that is the decision I have made. <laughs> Mr Drew calls Dean's mother. Hello, is it Ms Rowley? Hello. Um, one of my colleagues said they saw you having a conversation with Sam just outside the school. Was that right? As far as you can see, it all seems to be fine. Yeah? What I'm thinking then is that maybe I'll kind of convert his exclusions into afternoon schools and keep him with me, so that'll allow, him to, allow me to kind of keep him in school, but obviously not have him anywhere near Dean. Is that, is that all right? Good. All right. Thank you very much for your help. Cheers, then. Thanks, then. Bye-bye. Sam is the aggressor. He is the one who is wrong. He's not going to turn around and go, yes, I'm a terrible person. What I did was awful. I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. He's not going to reach that stage. But if you can get him to kind of say, actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, OK. Yeah, right. OK. Shouldn't have done it. Yeah, I was wrong. Right, sit up. Sit up and sort the uniform, OK? How much work have I put in for you today? Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot, OK? A lot. You were out of order and you were outrageous, OK? Yes, and I. The upshot of it is I am not going to exclude you for the rest of the week, but I am going to require you to do yeah. afternoon school every day for the rest of the week, OK? Uh, I can't do Wednesdays. I've got counselling. That's fine. But regardless of counselling, support, issues, problems, everything in your life and whatever, you cannot do what you did, and I will not ignore it. Yeah, I know. Okay? Right. Don't know what made him change his mind, but he ended up changing his mind. Mr. Jube is, is a fair, honest man. I felt grateful to him, like, don't know how many times, because I could have got kicked out ages ago, like permanently excluded, etc. had to move school, everything. I think that sometimes we forget what it is to be young. We forget the fact that they are children, they are not adults. You know, I think one of the things about being a child is you just do things. And if somebody actually sat you down and said, what on earth are you doing? You wouldn't do it. Dean Chubby Chubs. <laughs> That's a good one. You don't mean it, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, but I'm not bothered by it anymore. It's me. You've had enough of me. I'm used to you now. Yeah, you've had enough of me. I'm... Why do you wind each other up so much? It's entertaining. Yeah, very. <laughs> Winding each other up is just so bloody entertaining. What was your running with Dean's sister like? Scary, wasn't it? No, it was You're more... real scared of my sister. Huh? Mm, she still scares me nowadays. <laughs> You may all go, I suppose, as it's two minutes two. Right, thank you. Let us not be here again. I think one of the reasons I like teenagers is they don't always do what you want them to do, and they don't always do things you think are sensible. You cannot expect young people to behave how we expect ourselves to behave as adults. Otherwise, you might as well just make them adults at 11 and have done with it. This week, one, take one. Vinny was once a child star. When I'm older, I want to be a fireman and put fire out. 
At school, he became a star pupil. Multiplying 450 by 1.85. 832 pounds 50. Good. But since his parents' breakup, stop. No, no, stop. why is it right for you to do that? It's a different story. Vinny basically is pushing the self destruct button. Can the school keep helping him? I'm a stubborn old fool. Or will Vinny's behaviour force head teacher Mr. Goddard to exclude him permanently? This breaks my heart. The fact we're having this conversation, it all breaks my heart. Check me, I actually went to a gig at Shepherd's Bush Empire last night. <gasps> dude! Huh? You are a dude! <laughs> yes! Adina, there is no need for you to be wearing your coat. Remove it. Oh, you were smiling yesterday. Don't be all grumpy. Uh, Ellis, come here now. Do you get frustrated with having the same conversation day after day after day with students? Okay. Can you show yeah, me I think it is frustrating. Yes, it is. But it's also reality. You'd like them to just go, yes, sir, thank you. You're quite right, sir, yes. Do you know something? I'm going to reevaluate my entire life now and change everything that I'm doing based on this conversation. Well, it's not going to be, is it? Emma, they are young people, and what do you do when you're young? You test out every boundary you possibly can, because that's what you do. How many times have you got the top of your skirt rolled up? I mean, I don't want to be some kind of miserable old fuddy-duddy misery, OK? But it's just too short. My attitude to it is, is that a young person can do anything they want to do. Pull the gun, pull the gun, pull the gun. As long as they understand oh, that yeah. actually there are certain guidelines and certain rules, and when they get it wrong, they need to recognise that they've got it wrong, and that's just the way it is. Vinny, come here, please. Why? I'd like you to enter the school in exactly the same way as the other 890 students who attend this school. Until I see something telling me that there is a special new Vinnie Hunter law exempting you from the school's rules, you need to dress properly. OK. Billy Beddle, come here. Vinnie is 15 and has been at the school for four years. Mr Drew's out of order. He's got a grudge against me, miss. It's not, oh, my, it's not yeah, my fault. When I started in Year 7, I used to think, oh, the teachers are really scary and that. Like, and then... Never got a detention in Year 7, never got told off in Year 7. <laughs> I used to be a little good boy. No, I'm not. Vinny is still in the top set for most subjects, but since his parents' recent separation, his behaviour has dramatically worsened. Vin, come in. Like most days, Vinny's morning starts with a chat from his favourite teacher, Miss Conway. Have a seat. She's definitely by far the best teacher. She's the only reason I haven't been excluded. You reckon you're going to have a positive day today? Probably. No, let's try again. Do you reckon you're going to have a positive day today? Do you want to sit down, sir? No, thank you, mate. I'm not staying here. You're not stupid, are you? No. I know what he's capable of. And you build up a rapport. The amount of time, as a PE teacher as well, I've spent with him when he's been going to football matches, rugby matches, representing the school. It is tough, because you don't want to lose certain pupils. It's meant to be on silent. Can you turn it off, please? Because if it's on the lesson, what's going to happen? We get confiscated. Yeah, and then what's going to happen then? We'll get in more trouble. And then we're back to square one, aren't we? I need to get my bag. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, I'm in school. Vinny! What do you mean? Vincent! Oi, I've got to go because I'm speaking to one of my teachers quick. All right, safe, bye. Bye. OK, give me your phone. Why? OK, I'm going to block it away to avoid you getting in any trouble. Oh, miss. And then, OK, Vinny, 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 Vinny. Are you going to be OK today? Yeah. Lovely. Calm? Mm. Yes? Yeah. Lovely. I want you to work out the percentage carbon in glucose, which is C6H12O6. This is the type of thing as well that actually, once you get the hang of it, is really easy. Benny, where are you wandering around? <laughs> oh, 
always end up in the corridor, so I just think I'll just walk around for a bit. And then, obviously, a teacher hide from them, and then walk around again and see another teacher hide from them. You all right? <laughs> and then I'm having a conversation with another teacher. So I come here to get a drink. Where? From the walk family. Just oh my. The one there. Vinny. Vinny. Yeah. Do I hate myself? Oh. Do I hate myself? Did you behave yourself? Oh, I thought you said, do I hate myself? Yeah. See, you later, mate. Vinny? I'm going, Miss. No, that way. Don't be silly. Vin, Vin, where is your lesson? Vinny? Yes? Where's your lesson? Yeah. Come on, I'll walk back. Before you know it, the hour's gone. <laughs> I've missed the whole lesson. How can you not like him? Oh, you, you can't. You can't not like it. He's a little sod, but he's he just makes, so he likeable. Vinny, come here. I don't find the situation with Vinny impossible. I find it extremely frustrating. So far, since the bell went, you have walked this way and that way around about six times. Now, I'm aware that you think that you are allowed to do these things and that you think that the rules don't apply to you and nobody will say anything to you, OK? I am sat here in the corridor and I will. So I would like you to provide me with a note from your teacher which gives you permission to be walking the corridor. I'm actually going to the toilet to get a wet bath. Where is your note from your teacher allowing you to do this? I am my note. Go to your lesson. You are not walking the corridor. Vinny? I'm going to my lesson. Where is your lesson? Vinny is due in the Student Support Centre, a place where any student can go if they need extra help. Hello, Karen. I've got Vinny with me. I'm sending him up now. Vinny's being sent there because he's been disruptive in normal lessons. I'm a bit concerned today because he's got four hours up here. I just think it's asking a lot of Vinny. I'm very happy to have him. All right, cheers, Bex. Bye. Jesus. Got up there now, yeah? Bye. He's been set coursework for one of his GCSE options, BTEC Sport. I want a word with you. Yeah, I'm here. I'm not happy. What is this? Facebook or whatever. That? That, no. Is my BTEC Sport work. It is, certainly isn't. It is, isn't. My eyesight's bad. But it's not that bad. This only works because there's a level of trust. Oh, sorry, man. That's all right. Oh, Vinny, look, you're look, doing it again. Doing it, look. After break, we start again. Mm. Promise. <laughs> Hang on. You have yeah. seriously let me down. I asked you so politely not to do that, Vinay. If I can't trust you, it won't work, will it? I'm really frustrated with him. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Complaints about Vinny's behaviour have been coming in to head teacher Mr Goddard. Uh, Mr Witt has my folder. Yeah, well, I don't want you wandering the corridors just looking for Mr. Wicks. No, I'll be two seconds, I'll be straight away. Hello, sir. You have got to be having a laugh, innit? Why? You've been taking the mick all day. Why have I been taking the mick? Come on. Oh, I'm not saying I'm sitting in his office again. That's so wrong. Stay cool, no, I'm just going to go on. I'm actually going. Sounds like it, Vinny. Hold on, we've been looking for you all day. You've truanted lessons. Where were you in maths? I was sitting on Blue Bench. Yeah, and I walked around to get you out of Blue Bench and you'd done a runner. Were you in your maths lesson? No, I wasn't in your maths lesson. So, why not? Really, walking away doesn't make your problems go away. You know that. Did you go that way? I think the biggest issue is trust around adults. His trust around adults was damaged by the fractured mum and dad's relationship. 80% of school-based problems start at the home. And, you know, that's, that's so obvious when you see Vinny's change so much and see the shift in his behaviour because of it. Do you ever think, OK, I've crossed the line now, I've gone too far? Sometimes. And then I just go speak to Miss Conway and sort it out. You sort of rebelling is making your life worse. 
Because as soon as anything gets a bit hard, your automatic reaction is, oh, I'm going home. Yeah, because everyone tells you, if he the bigger man, walk away. So when I get in an argument at school, instead of standing there and confronting someone and screaming at them and shouting at them, I'd rather just walk away. Bottom line is, you go to all your lessons. I was worse than this in the No, you weren't, Vin. Yeah, you I was. No, I completely disagree. What, you tell me you, I've got worse? Yes. No. Yes. I've got better. No, you haven't, and you know as well as I do. Vinny's hard to get through to now. Barriers up, he won't speak very, very openly. But there's a few times he said, I wish my parents were still together. And he, I, th I think to some extent, I could be wrong, it's just my opinion, he blames himself. At the end of the day, it's... It's your choice. You make the decisions. The last, the next nine months are going to be massive. I want you to do well. Other members of staff want you to do well. And I'm sure when you're in the right frame of mind, you want to do well, yeah? I don't want for you in, what, four years' time to be sitting there thinking, you know what, I wish I listened. You may not trust what I'm saying or believe in what I'm saying, but I guarantee what I'm telling you is valuable. OK, pack away. Books back to me, please. It's very good, this, because everyone stops and looks at me, which means I can see whether or not you're wearing your uniform properly. I feel I should do this more often. Let me see. Yes, good. Hayden Denton, I believe we're spending time together on Monday? Yes, sir. Right, well, get your work up, please. I'm getting up. Thank you. The beer's a sexful sports leader, need a sense of humour, doesn't mind a joke, which helps to bring the group together but no when to stop, helps shy our kids to become more confident with themselves. And have you written all this? Yeah. That's Lead... fantastic. Miss Conway. Miss Conway's a very passionate sports person. She never gives up and pushes all of the students to reach their best potential. She needs all of the leadership skills to become the best that she can be. In my opinion, she is already the best she can be because I love her dearly. Oh, you know, that is lovely. <laughs> that is fantastic. Have we got to the end? No. What you need to understand is there's an automatic punishment if you've got cigarettes on you. Place cigarettes on my desk. Oh, is that even God. my jacket? Okay, <laughs> cigarettes on the desk. <laughs> cigarettes yeah. on the desk. This is my sister's <clears throat> coat. OK, you will be punished for possessing them. However, if you refuse to hand them over, then you will be punished Mama, further. I have my sister's bag. If I get in trouble, I'm going to go at you for it. Long Z. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Lobs what the hell's a lob's head? A lob is a foolish person. I looked it up on streetslang.com. <laughs> oh, so actually, all she's done is just called me an idiot. Yeah. I thought it was like short for lobster head and that somehow that meant the only way to deal with me was boil me alive or that I would be sold in some expensive restaurant or something. And I was quite ah. taken by that, the thought I could be a lobster head. I thought you'd use a lobster head for a long period of time. Indeed. When he arrived, he was known as bright, sporty, cheeky chappy. And now he's bright, but not doing what he should with it. Sporty, but not playing any sport. Well, why have I closed the door? Come on, Vinny, don't let me down, turn up. The cheekiness has turned into truculence. But that other kid's still in him. He's an A-levels and university kid, if he wants to be. How's that? Hi, Vinny, have a seat, mate. Talked about yesterday. Uh, I just... I don't know. Vinny, you've got to follow our rules. Yeah. OK? Mm -hmm. And we can be like other schools, or we just can say, actually, all those problems are yours. If you're not here, you're not following our rules, now that means you fail. And as far as I'm concerned, you fail, we fail. That's what this school should be about, a no-fail organisation. And I will invest as much personal energy and time into you as I possibly can and your behaviour yesterday really felt like, why are we making so much effort? And Vinny just votes with his feet and goes, right, I'm going, and walks away. It's easy to walk, yeah, it is. All right, later. see you later. 
Under Mr Goddard, the school strives never to expel a student. The percentage of prisoners in jail who are excluded from school is massive. It's something like 80, 85 per cent of all inmates. I can't look myself in the eye when I do, do my tie up and think that I've confined somebody to that road. I'll do anything to avoid permanently excluding the kid. And that's a difficult line, giving that kid chance after chance after chance. It's not allowed to be on indoors. I know. And I ain't gonna wear it with me. I don't believe you at the moment. Yeah, but Because I'm losing you. faith in you at the moment. I'll build I'm gonna give you a headache okay. until the bitter end. Okay. Okay. I've been to the dentist this morning. And how was that? And they said that I've got to eat crisps every few hours. Really? So I've got to eat crisps. You need to eat a lesson, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Vinny, take your coat off. Vinny, Vinny, you're in a place now where you can mess your whole life up. OK, you've got until I've handed these books out and then we're going to start. Oh, no map today. No Vinny. People would live in really quite terrible conditions, but it would be a roof over their head and there would be some form of food. Um, I am so hungry, oh, I feel like I'm in poverty. Compulsory vaccinations. OK, so what are vaccinations? Why is that important? OK, morning. Morning. I've lost my report now. Mm. Where have you been? Um, in G4, in RM, everywhere. I've had Vinny since year seven and we've always gotten very well and he said in year nine he was only taking history because I was teaching it and I've had a really good relationship and all last year he would stay one hour every week to do his work with me, which is unheard of really from Vinny, it was fantastic. Cos I thought we had RM, Miss Conway told me I had RM. You need to stay behind at the end cos I told well, you yesterday... Ten minutes to Miss Conway at the end. Well, yeah. you need to stay behind and speak to me first. All so, right. take a seat. Where are you going now? Oh, lovely. Super. Oh, I'll catch him later. Next one. It really upsets me when I know that we might lose students and they're just going to drift, and that's horrible. I noticed with him, it's like recently now when I talk to him, he's just not... He's not the same boy. Like, you know, for whatever reason, his eyes look different. He's a different boy. He's not the way he was. In Year 7, I saw Vinny as a dad's boy. His dad came to all his football matches and the kids would tell me that if Vinny got hurt and cried, the dad would be like, come on, Vin, you come off. Don't you worry about that. But I think Vinny had more of that dad time. And so I think Vinny got more damaged by that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I don't know. I think you was really bothered about your mum and dad splitting up him, wasn't you? Yeah. When they first split up, he, he wanted us, he took us out everywhere, he got a girlfriend and then pushed us to the side and now he just don't want us. And then as soon as you don't want him anymore, then he'll come running back to us again. I just no want to talk to him full stop. He's my dad and he should act like a dad, but it's up to him. How do you feel like this game? Have you? Many of times. I sat down without arguing and said, that's how I feel. You can't sit down with my dad without arguing. Can't you? You can't sit down with my dad without his girlfriend being there. And it always gets me angry, cos he's always letting us down. I don't tell anyone about it, so I'll just boil it up for ages. Do you talk to your mum about it? Yeah. Sometimes. What does she say? She calls him loads of names cos she hates him. Yes, I suppose that doesn't help, really. No. I burn, you know when you burn the top of your mouth when you're a fat pig and you eat your food too quickly? <laughs> Let's be honest, that's how you do it. <laughs> and now it really hurts. Right, so what's happening in this lesson is you need to go into a Word document. You need to work quietly. You don't need to speak to anybody because you've got your own... Uh... Vinny, why are you late? Huh? Do what? Are you in here with us? <coughs> with me? No, everybody. Why would I pick on you? It is mainly for you, Vin, must admit. 
I'm going to put it at the front. No, I don't. No, no, no. no. no you can't drink in here. You cannot drink in here. Because you can't drink it in here, Vinny. I'll go stand outside and quickly. No, Vinny. He actually just come into my classroom and the milkshake. Vin, what are you doing? Mm mm. Why? Finishing this and I'm coming in. Because she's going to try and tell me that I've got to leave it on the side. You're not supposed to have it, are you? Well, if there was longer lunch times, I wouldn't. Oh, lunch time's not long enough then? Mm. Can't fit in 20 Bensons and a milkshake. No. OK, let's stop because you're really taking the mick right now. Right, if you're not back in this classroom in 10 seconds, I'm going to get on call. OK? One of the yeah. teaching staff is always on call throughout the day to deal with students removed from lessons. Yeah, turn around and leave. Why are you not working? You've got five seconds to leave that outside and come in here, or you're not coming in. OK, three seconds. You're not coming in. You get on call. Hello. All right. We're having a fat argument over a banana milkshake. Let's go. Miss, you got a tissue? Vin? No, no, no. Why are you talking to him? Vin, get me a tissue, please. Charlotte? There's flipping water Stop. all over this computer. OK, oh. now you need to go outside. Oh. Calm yourself down. Oh. No, you're just pity. She doesn't want to do the work. That's exactly what it is. It's just joining Vinny, isn't she? Yeah. I'm a smash. Come on, you downstairs. Why are you allowed to go back in? Go and apologise, you. Vinny! <laughs> Vinny! I'm going on. Sir! Sir, who's on call? I don't know. Mrs Turner has made her judgement. You're not happy with it, OK? okay. No, listen. 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 I think at okay. times we have lost the sense that young people sometimes need very strong guidance. And I think at times we've almost lost that kind of confidence as a society that actually young people need to be controlled. Stop, Finn, stop. No, I hate you. And our constant wish to treat young people as completely autonomous people and to always give them the opportunity to express their opinion and to always let them be able to make decisions is actually quite detrimental. OK, stop. No, no, why stop. is it right for you to do that? Stop, from, from... because you are 15 or 16 years old, I am what? 38 what? years old, I'm a dep and I'm a deputy head teacher, so and you're a, a student. Law. So that's yes. a law. Because yes. you're older, you're allowed to speak whenever you want, yes. and I'm not. Yes. Well, look, anyway, I'm talking no, now, so... you will talk when I tell you you can. No, At the I moment, won't. you won't. I'm not a dog. I'm not, you're not telling me when I do things. OK, would you like to carry on attending this school in order to get an education? Uh, obviously. Then start treating people with the respect yes. they're entitled yes. to receive. Well, I'm... I have got a colleague here who is basically telling me that next time he's on call, he is wondering whether or not to do it because you are basically so utterly contemptuous of this school's attempts to manage and control discipline that you stop him from doing his job. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm talking now. OK. Conversation's over. Go and say to Mr Goddard's office now. Vinny will have about 27 final warnings and he'll probably have more final warnings than quite a few of the staff would want him to have. But there comes a time where, actually, I'm on my own and I look around and everybody else is thinking, no, they've run out of chances. And that's when I have to stop and think, actually, am I doing the right thing or is it a personal, is it a personal journey for me about more about me and getting this kid through than it is about the school as a whole? I've seen a few Vinny Hunters, I have to say. You're not the first Vinny Hunter I've seen. Not actually called Vinny Hunter, obviously, but you're quite hard work, Vin. You are. It's quite hard work to keep being positive with you, keep saying you can do stuff, keep supporting you. It's, it's emotionally quite difficult. Because actually, a bit of me wants to go, well, if you don't want to do it, then... That, that's what a bit of me wants to do. If I'm honest, because then I've got more energy and more time to deal with other people. But I'm a stubborn old fool. and I, That's not what I do, I don't give up. But it feels a little bit like you are. Right. Let's come see you. Yes, you do. Stand here, all of you in a line. There'll be lots of people. Right, name? Jake Pearson. Right. In your personal user area, you have a game called 13 Days in Hell and a game called 13 Days Nightmare 12. Would you like to tell me which one of your teachers told you to download that game into your personal user area so that you could run the game rather than accepting the limited internet access your teachers gave you? 
none. Right, you are banned from accessing the internet in school and let go and join the line, except for a list of websites drawn up by your teachers until the new year. Off you go, please. Form a line behind these people. If you speak to me before I speak to you, I am going to internally exclude you. And you are all going to wait while I do exactly the same conversation with every single one of you, OK? Everyone in? Right. Daniel Whitbread, 11 games. Would you like to explain those? No, sir. You will have limited internet access until January for the fact that you have tried to get around your teacher's ability to educate you. Off you go, please. OK. Josh Jones. 46. Would you like to explain that to me? No, I thought not. Thank you very much. Ryan Howe. Would you like to explain to me which one of your teachers told you to download the torture game? None. Thank you very much. Connor Goldhawk. In your personal area, there are 56. Well done. You win the prize. Which of your teachers told you to download 56 games? No, sir. Good answer. I think we're learning a little lesson this morning. Sometimes we just need to take the heat. That would be... Fizzy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look how cute Dean is when she's a baby. No, I don't want to look. She's cute. She's cute now. Right, phone away. You can look at her later. I've got other ones. Right, I'll tell you what. Uh -huh. Vinny's behaviour is getting worse. Oh. Wait, who's that? <laughs> Despite giving him one-to-one -one support, the school are finding it increasingly difficult to manage him. Has he gone that way? Right, Finn, no. Finn. So, Vinny, basically, is... Um, Pushing the self-destruct button today. Yesterday he was caught smoking yeah. on the Year 7 playground yeah. in front of the kids. Yeah. And it's, ju it's just yeah. not acceptable. He's, what he's trying to do is make every adult leave him alone. Yeah. Because he thinks, if I'm horrible enough, adults will walk away from me. That's what he's doing, you know, and he's right. They will. I look at Vinny. That could have been me. You know, I lived in a big council estate. Um, you know, I used to hang around under the slide when it was raining. And there was you know, plenty of opportunities to make bad choices. I was from a, a family stock where I was able to make the right choice. And, you know, I look at somebody like Vinny who's had, you know, disruptions in his family life and he hasn't got that security that I had. Um, and so a lot of times I actually don't see where I was in the kids. I see there, but for the grace of God, I would have gone. It breaks my heart to see where he started and where he's ended up. Yeah. You know, and how such a, you know, I a gifted young person can can just spiral out of control. I think we always need to be aware he is a he is a significant contributor to the problem because he wanders the corridors, yeah. he yeah. stops them from going to their lessons. Yeah. We hold the line that if a young person is um, disturbing other people's learning, that's unacceptable. Yeah. No, but what I mean is when he's then walked yeah, up no, and he's wandering, yeah. he is then Stoking well, the fires the of problems. He left the site on three or four occasions and still comes back. Most Vinny and Vinny stuff will end up going through me and Bex. If you have to deal with him, deal with him, <coughs> okay? And deal with him exactly the same way as you would do normally. So there we go. All right. Um, children in need day. Joe, can you make sure that heads of house know? The Vinny thing, thing tears me apart completely. I think Vic is right regarding Vinny. <laughs> It stretches my bounds of loyalty and my bounds of thinking it's the right thing to do to the absolute limit. But I do think he's right. I, 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 I kind of think about it and I think, does that mean that he's a better person than me? In terms of he is more prepared to just keep going with Vinny and keep going and going and going. And am I somehow lesser, less of a caring person? All right, see you later, mate. I'll, um, yeah, see you soon. Listen to Iron Maiden, baby, with you. Ooh. It's eight forty five. Vinny's turned up at school, but he's not in his uniform. He didn't spend the night at home. Why are you dressed like that? Because I didn't get out. So what happened? I just have, started having an argument, and my mum ended up pushing me out of school. So you're not in a good frame of mind at the moment? No, not really. <laughs> OK. Have you spoke to mum? No. 
No, I want to meet I was about to say you probably don't want to at the moment either. Why? Ever or? Ever. I want to go into care. OK, but it's, it's, it's not a nice place, Finn. No, but it's better than my heart at the moment. But people glorify care and think, oh, yeah, it's going to be this and that. People are in there for reasons that aren't very nice. OK, um, I need to speak to someone to find out what we're going to do. I miss I got the money in. Oh, well done. You need to pass it on to Miss Page. Vinny's come in today and he said, oh, Mum kicked me out last night, say that Adina's haven't got my uniform, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know where. Do you mean to contact true. Mum and yeah. find out? Yeah, we need to find out if it's true. Yeah. And if, if it is true, then I'm going to take it straight to Brian, the social worker. Hello, Kim. Yeah, he's in today. He said that he didn't stay at home because you kicked him out. OK, so that is true. Are you going to let him back at all, or...? Yeah, so you got call the police in the end, and the police came round, OK. All right, then. Thanks. Bye. It sounds like really down. I'll get one. Um, yeah, so she's not going to have him back. Okay. You right? Oh, darling, what's up? What's up, Ben? You've come to me, so don't tell me nothing's up. I just want to sit down. Seems not good then. Yeah. How are you feeling then? To the point of me being told I mustn't upset him. What did you do last night? I had a fight with my old little brother. No, oh, because he slapped me around the face. So I... Why did he slap you that? Because he kept jumping on my bed, so I dragged him off my bed. And then he slapped you? Yeah. So he's so been an annoying little brother? Yeah, so then I hit him and then my mum started having a go at me. When you hit him, did you hit him, hit him, or did you...? Just gave him a little... little... Well... Did he cry? Yeah. Mm. But he always cries. Do you always fight you? It's only 11, Vin. Just go home, Vin. Don't get into an argument and, you know, apologise and... Vin, listen Vin, to me. Keep it sensible with Mum, yeah? Just say, look, Mum, I know I've done wrong. I'm really sorry. I'm just... I'm really trying here. Would she kick me out if she loves me? Can you stand up what to do, Vin? Mate, I've been on the phone with your mum in tears. Oh. You know where we are, though, don't you? You just come in here if you're feeling a bit... Right. Cheers. See you later. It's not that I didn't want him, I just need help. I just knew that if I didn't do something soon, something bad was going to happen. And I know he won't see it at the moment, but when he's older, I'm hoping that he'll think, yeah, my mum did do that for a reason. She didn't do it because she didn't want me. She did it for my own good. It started when me and his dad split up. Up until a couple of months ago, I think he still thought that we was going to get back together again, but there was no chance of that. He's got no confidence in himself. When you talk to him, he's like he's got loads of confidence, but he, when he's indoors on his own, he hasn't. Other people don't see some of the sides that I see to him. Everybody who knows Vinny thinks he's lovely, and, and he is lovely. He's just... Sometimes he goes off on one and he can just switch, just like that, ending up with Vinny's door hanging off by the hinge. All you need to do, right, is... It's two days since Finney's argument with his mum and younger brother. Since then, he hasn't been staying at home. Social worker's been trying to call Brian Goff. I know he's on his way. I'll be back in a minute. Head teacher Mr Goddard has just had a call to say social services are on their way to see Vinny. They've agreed with his mum he should go into voluntary care. Vinny's about to be taken to, to his new child, child home, basically, Chelmsford. Right. Does, is Vinny aware that this is a possibility? Yeah, when he spoke to us last, he went, they said, I'm either going into care tomorrow... Right. ..or I'm going to a foster placement. OK, and what's his... So he's what's well his, up on what's, it. What's his view on it? He said, Mum doesn't want me at home. We had a long, long chat about life and everything else, and he said, it's probably better that I'm gone. 
Fucking hell. Um, he said, okay. maybe it'll give me a chance to clear my head, get right. it right. The worry, of course, with a kiddie zone is it could actually be exactly so the wrong thing. He learns that to be, learns that'd be better at what he's dying to be better at. It would depend who's surrounding him. And how long he stays there for. All right. Um, Your involvement in families and the issues around families is, is much bigger than it's ever been. Don't go up to him. I'm going to go and collect him and bring him to my office. We have a multi-agency meeting with the police, the, the hospital, social care, you know, youth offending, all sitting around the table with a school teacher. And more often than not over the last few years, the lead professional chosen to look after that young person or that family from around that table is the school. Hello, miss. Log on for a second to chat. Sorry, miss, is that That's right? That's right, save it. Thanks, miss. You're welcome. Thank you. It's 30 seconds, Vin. He should be, he's on his way over. It can't be far. I'll see you. What's the plan? The plan is we found him a placement in residential children's home. They're going to take him this afternoon. Our duty is to provide him a safe place to stay. Yeah. This is the last option. I'd much rather work at home. Yeah. As the further that gap becomes. Yeah, definitely. The more he starts linking in what's going on down there, yeah. the harder it is to get him back. So I feel some more in-depth work could be done at home, possibly to try and work out what's going on, bringing his dad into that. The conflict between mum and dad, trying to sort that out for a start. Mum and dad's situation is so messy. Dad brings his new girlfriend's son yeah. to school, comes to watch him play football. I've had conversations with dad about that, and about my personal thoughts on that, do you yeah. know what I mean? No, I like dad. No. I actually, I like his new partner yeah. as well. I get on very and well he with has her. To make decisions. But yeah. unfortunately, the consequence is possibly partly to do with what we're at. Where we're at. Well, there's no possibly partly. Just, there you go. You you know, know, the breaking, the yeah. breaking point was the, yeah. the breakup of mum and dad. He's very damaged goods from that mm. point of view. Yeah. Okay, let's get him in. Okay. Come. Oh, where's he gone? <laughs> well, that's not a good sign. Oh, there you are. I was thinking, oh, where's he gone? Come in, Vin. Have a seat, mate. All right, mate. Uh, yeah, good. You aware of what's going on in the situation? Yeah. Yeah? There'll be other kids there. Yeah. Don't know what they're like. Some will be good. Some will be all, they're all, they're all good. Um, some some behaviour will be better than others. You're your own man. Keep your own and do your own thing. Don't be pulled into the behaviour of other kids. Okay. Kids will be saying, yeah, we play stuff up, we do this, we do that. Do your own thing. Yeah. Right. This yeah. breaks my heart. Mm. The fact we're having this conversation, it all breaks my heart. This is a horrible experience mm. for you, and I understand that. But we have to get something out of it that's positive, that helps you move on the next step. And this place is what can do that for you, OK? Yeah. There is so much potential in you, Vinny, still to get it right mm -hmm. and still to get the job you need and the, the life you want. While the other stuff in your life is up and down, in, you know, up in the air and not really knowing what this isn't. Okay, and you will always be welcome back in, no matter how many times you annoy us. Mm. Um, mm. And, you know, we will get you the results you need to move on. Okay? okay? The more you can spend here, the more you can invest in your future, the less chance there is of your kids when you haven't ever been in this position. Mm. Yeah? Right, mate, you take care of yourself, yeah? Right, mate, see you later. You all right? Yeah? All right. Yeah? You sure? All right. I'll sign you out. Thank you. Right, mate.
Are you, where are you two going tonight? Are you not out tonight then? Really? Yeah. See you later. never had one where they've moved into care at that stage of their life. We've nurtured him for four years and a bit. I sit there thinking that this is a young person that I showed around the school as a year six with his mum and dad. You all right, fella? Which path are you now taking? His behaviour's forced him down this path, but is it a path that he can get out of? You know, is it something that he can change and still lead the life that he is capable of? And, and you come back to saying, could you have done more? You know, have we missed a trick? Have we not involved parents? Have we not seen those signs of Vinny earlier and therefore could have stopped this happening? Listen, go and de-stress. Have a lovely weekend. And yourself. And you, sweetheart. See you soon. Bye. It's Monday morning. Come here. OK. Oh, sorry. You are turning into somebody who I keep having to tell off at the moment. You need to be very careful that people don't start thinking that you're going to be a problem student. Please be good. Pockets, don't eat them. The amount of dollars you're going to get is... Going Vinny's back in school after his first weekend in care. So you're just multiplying 450 by 1.85. That will give you how many? £832.50. £832.50, yeah. yeah? OK, good. <laughs> Those of you who weren't here last lesson, I said homework. Yeah, we get pocket money. Right, man. <laughs> how much? 7 50 on a Friday. Um, three pound every day for school and three pound ten on that's a Wednesday. That's real good. A bonus money. That's real good. That's Where actually sick. I know. I've reduced Vinnie Hunter's timetable this morning. Um, right. He was at the access centre period one, nice and calm. Um, he seems seems okay actually. So what's the people like there? Yeah. All right. They're all yeah. not like you, are they? Ooh, no. Much worse than me. How long have you got to stay there? Four months. Um, I have to, yeah. Yeah. You look all right, though. Oh, any nice girls? <laughs> That'd be a bonus, wouldn't it? You have to do your own washing or anything? Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. They don't do your ironing or nothing. So how do you find Can you use a washing machine? Uh, I've learned <laughs> in the last two years. So you're allowed just to see Mum when you want, though? Yeah. Oh, that's all right. I'm not allowed to come down on school days, though. No. Are you allowed to see Mum on school days? No. No. That's have to wait till the weekend. Right. You'll be all right. So Aren't you, Vinny? Look at me. Yeah. You will be. Hopefully. So do you phone Mum every day? No. Try to. Vinny will leave with your five A stars to see. He'll get those, you know. Will he get B's and A's? No. We finish at one and we finish. I'll get into his exams. By hook or crook, I'll get into his exams. There's not a doubt in my mind that he'll make it to the end of school. But it will be with a few bruises for both of us on the way. Remember where I am if you need me. Cheers, miss. <laughs> this week, how to deal with Luke. Today. <laughs> Calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't smash anything. Have you ever thought about having anger management lessons or anything like that? Already had them. Have you? Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> Shit. And for Liam and Skye, two year 11s in love, the secret's out. Did you know that we knew it was a Scott? Have you talked to you through Skye? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm scared still. Did you not know? No! No! No one tells me anything. Number two, can condoms be obtained at any age? No! <laughs> T 
today at Sex Ed for the Year 11s. Condoms, there isn't a legal age limit. You can still go to the family planning clinic, whether you're male or female, and get condoms for free. Our sex and relationships education would be seen as very good. And actually, it's much easier with a room full of teenagers who all have the same thing. It's much less embarrassing to have it that way than my dad sitting me down and saying, now, son. I'm going to give you a picture. I want you to label the diagram as much as you can. That's jokes. Anus. <laughs> <laughs> The period hole. Oh my god. <laughs> the lesson is being taken by Mrs. Adams, a health worker who teaches Essex kids about sex, relationships and their consequences. It doesn't seem to be a connection in people's brains that actually if you have sex and you're not using contraception, then you will get pregnant. So, guys, how many teenagers get pregnant in England each year? Any ideas? 15,000. 15,000? OK, it's actually roughly around 39,000. There's a thin line between being pressured to do it and just really wanting to do it because everyone else is. That's part of sort of growing up, you trying to be a big man and be like, yeah, I've had it, yeah, it feels good. Before you've had sex, everyone thinks, oh, yeah, it's, gonna, it's so good, like, but it ain't as good as everyone says it is. My dad was just like, I'm proud of you, son. I was like, oh, cheers, Dad. Before you start to have sex, you need to sort out a reliable method of contraception first. Don't take a chance and think, I might get away with it, because you might not. Do you think students are having sex at a younger age? Yeah, I mean, okay. I know that there will be parents who think that they wouldn't dream of you know, that being an aspect of their life already, and it is. Method of contraception at all. First love, it's 15 and 16, it's absolute pandemonium. Not in class, there's a time and a place. The bell's gone. All we can do as a school is equip them with the knowledge, make sure they understand the choices they're making and hope they make the right ones. Liam and Sky got together after she arrived from Thailand. Well, I've known him since I first came to England and been together for um, a year and five months. Because <laughs> like Luke's going out with Cash and I'm going out with Liam, there's nobody to get left out. And we just have a laugh. She's my friend, he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> So how would you describe each other? What's, what's Sky like? She's amazing to be with. Uh, throw, she's, there's just too many things. Uh, she's, she's lovely, she's quiet, she's funny. <laughs> I wasn't in love before, but when I found him, I, I think I am. Liam's been called out of class by Mrs Goddard. She's the school's inclusion manager. She oversees all students with special educational needs, as well as helping those facing difficult times. And she's picked up on rumours about Liam and his girlfriend, Skye. Right, I'm aware that things have changed a little bit for you. Did you know that we knew it was in school? Have you talked to it through Skye? Yeah. Have you, have you spoken to your granddad yet? Because we, as a school, we're not allowed to keep things from carers. Your granddad's your carer. I'm not allowed to keep this from him. You need to have the conversation with him, just to put him in the picture about what's going on. OK. Big change, eh, mate? I feel really bad, like. Why are you saying you're feeling bad? Which I've never done before. No. Yeah. When I told Liam I was pregnant, he was quite shocked. Come on, we'll go out. I want him to stay with me here, yeah, but I do scare that if I keep here, then he won't be with me, and he just... I'm scared that he's going to tell me to get rid of it.
She needs somewhere to go. We need to know if there's measles in the school. We need to know if there's chicken pox in the school, because if she's pregnant, she can't be here. There's a whole load of other stuff. It's the same, she's got to treat the same as a worker. You know, she's a pregnant woman now, rather than a child. Um, can I sign me in, please? The also other thing is, you know, it won't be kept quiet. Oh, she won't keep it quiet by the sounds of it. it will, no, it'll be around <laughs> the school, probably by lunchtime. Are you going to come in? Yeah. Come in, Dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you said the sky's pregnant. Yeah, don't you? How do you know? Is it true or is it real? I wonder if anyone knows. We'll do a bit of investigating. Thank you, thank you. How do you know? Did you not know? No! Shut up, though. How do you know? I found out from someone like in the year below. Like, yeah, so do I. Sky's actually pregnant. She's yeah. gonna get all big and gross. <laughs> <laughs> ben and I went to the shop the other day. And then at lunchtime, and we're walking back, and Liam was like five paces in front of Sky. They'd had a row about something. Something. Sky, not a care in the world. I know, eating she pasta, you were smiling. Monkeys. Like, just she... smiling, eating her pasta. And I'm... <laughs> You've got a baby in your tummy. Oh. Hmm? She, she's pregnant, Sky. Did you not know that? No! Oh, for fuck's sake. I never hear, I, no one tells me anything. Um, what are they planning to do? Oh, keep it. Um, her mum, very pleased. Won't allow abortion anyway because she disagrees with it. Fucking hell. The kids. Disaster. Well, I've managed to go 35 years without having a child. Why does everyone want to rush to have one, for Christ's sake? I'm really excited. But you can't wait till we get fat. Not really. You get me <laughs> back <laughs> You really said it, Shana. I can't why wait. Would, why would I just want to get the bump. Back. Hey, don't worry, you're going to get back hate from big boobs as well. Solomon. Saggy. <laughs> Saggy boobs. <laughs> Like that. Oh. Will you I breastfeed? Like that, yeah. yeah. Oh. But yeah, Liam. I think he'd be. I reckon he'll be a good. I think he will be like more grown up than he is now when the baby's here. I think. I don't know. I don't think I've got the power like you have to have a kid. <laughs> You're more stronger than us. Not really. Yeah. I do scared. Plus you've got Liam. Who yeah. helps you out? Yeah, but I'm scared still. I feel that it's incredibly sad that. A 15 year old has got to deal with what Sky's gonna have to deal with. 15, 16 year old, you know, that's it's that it's tough. Being a parent's tough. You know, it's and that's she's a child. I never thought I will be finished school as a mum. Never thought that. Would you like me to change the rules of the world because they don't suit you? Would you like me to do that? 98% of our kids come in every day, do the right thing and leave. 2% take up probably 70% of our resources. If they are stopping themselves from learning, then we try and work with them. If they're stopping others from learning, then they, they need to be removed. That problem needs to stop because the others don't deserve that. Well, I'll get a detention on that. Are you aware, Mr. C is out here? Uh, Mr. Cook is not going anywhere until he goes to see Miss Connolly to get his report. He is refusing to go and talk to Miss Connolly and get his report. Is someone taking the first one off of you, or...? Hello, I'm very sorry. We're not talking to Luke Cook, who is the boy kind of stood at your window. So can we please ignore him? Right, eh? If he wishes to talk to anyone, he can come and talk to me or to Joe Connolly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old Luke is on report for his disruptive behaviour. Does it worry you that you get in trouble? Yeah, definitely. It's just long. That's all I can say. It's the only way for it. It's just long getting in trouble. There's no point in it. Sorry, miss. Whilst I don't wish to be difficult, I don't want everyone having conversations with Luke because I feel it's encouraging him to avoid his responsibilities and all he literally has to do is go to Miss Connolly and ask for his report. I like Luke and I've, had, I've always had a good relationship with him. I know that there's a really successful young person in there, but yeah, he's tested my patience. Oh. When I'm getting in trouble, all that's going through my head is just like, why, why did I do this, why did I do that? If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be in this situation. Are you going to get this report? It was rude to me. Okay, she said sorry. Can I just point out, yeah? Even 
you can see how silly you're being. But I'm trying not to have an argument with you, so I'm going to smile and laugh, not at you, but at the whole situation, Luke, in order to break the tension and, and keep some calmness going, OK? No, I'll sit outside. OK, if that's your choice. But you're not going anywhere till you get your report. Thank you. Being on report is serious. Only 3% of students ever need to go on it. I have to be here for the whole day, I will. Be. Well, that's very silly of you. It's the school's way of trying to improve bad behaviour. Right, Luke. What? Oh, Was that lesson that bad? Yes. Notes about Luke's behaviour are made by teachers after every lesson. Each day he must check in with his head of house, Miss Conway. Until his behaviour is acceptable, Luke receives a new report every week. OK. There's a lovely report. Don't trip it, don't screw it, look after it. It's like your new puppy. It's a Persian blue staff for you, yeah? <laughs> and they're nice dogs. So, how long have you been on the report for? Quite long, really. All of this <laughs> term, or like...? Yeah, near enough. It's report number 57. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just about to send an email saying I've lost Luke. Luke lost his report. Oh dear, he found it there. Here, Luke, as you work. He's a bit tired after having to come all the way up to the top of the He's got to survive, right, Luke? Cool. Here, well. yeah, Luke, come sit here. Yeah, you just missed the fun part. We've just done Mrs. Tiny... Goddard takes Luke for two of his subjects. Can you sit yourself down? She has been his most consistent support throughout his time at school. Luke, can you get your pens and pencils out for me? How is the bag? Your pen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> Give me a headache. Right, can I just tell you what we've just done? You haven't got a pen? Luke? Have you got a pen? And can I have your report, please? Right, let's go, people, keep going. OK, we now need to move on to um, communication difficulties, because for some people, for very, very different reasons, communication is really difficult. So we're just going to read through this. The book, bit in the book is actually very good. It's just sometimes I'm just having like, put a funny day. You know what I mean? And I'll just say something and the teacher won't like it. And then I end up giving them back chat and then it always comes to worst. <laughs> OK, I'm going to ask you, so tune in, OK? What's the normal speed limit on a motorway? Don't even ask me, me. Well, I'm asking everybody, so you're part of the class. Yeah, but Give I don't want to ask the question. that somebody might have to do with widening the M25. I will pass this question on to Dean. You've actually been a little bit rude, Luke. These are stupid questions. Well, Luke, I asked you one and you didn't answer, which was a well, real shame. they're stupid. Okay. <laughs> We're just moving on to the, the task. Why is a road a dangerous okay. site? OK, so... <laughs> yeah. Luke is what probably is just about our most road? difficult Year 11 because he just refuses to accept that he's wrong. You know, there's, there's issues around relationships outside of school. The granddad's just died. Granddad was a very important person in his life. But he is incredibly challenging. I have no idea why you're behaving like this today. And I really, really don't like it. And I will not let you dictate to me everything that you do. It's not on you. Never so done I'm it. trying to explain to you I what I don't want to do. I know you don't want to do it, Luke. If I don't want to do I've it, you I'm to do not going to do it. Attitude is appalling. Yeah, all right. Clap at it then. Pardon? Clap at it then. Just step outside, Luke, please. I don't want you in here. I want to fucking be in it. I don't even know where I am. Paige knows what she's doing. Kashana, do you know what you're doing? I can't have you calling me names, Luke. What did I call you now? I can't have you calling me names. What did I call you? Excuse me, don't shout. What did I call you a name? As you left the room, you called me a name under your breath. Oh, did I? Yeah? Why don't you hear me then? Ian, why aren't you logged on? I'm not having it. Okay, I'm pissed off to the okay, match. Okay. I'm getting fucking okay, mad. OK, OK, calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't smash anything. Come, come out into the quad. OK, you know as well as I know, Mrs Goddard is very, very fair. Yeah, no, yeah? she okay. ain't. No, apparently, okay. I called her a name in there. OK, I can't comment. I'm just on call. I've got a call to come up there and speak to you. Obviously, you're on report to me. You're not in the best frame of mind at the moment. Am I right in saying... I could be wrong, it's stuff outside school as well. What? No, what do you mean? To do with family and stuff. No, 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 no. What, are you talking about my granddad? Yeah. No. Who's 
Was he buried or cremated? Cremated. I don't know, it's a lot of different things with his death that mixed me up, like the way he died. How did he die, if you don't mind me asking? Slowly. I sort of felt angry, like, at myself, and then I felt sad. Why did you feel angry at yourself? I don't know, but I didn't like, make the effort, really. I couldn't go and see him. The only time I went to see him, I couldn't even walk into the room. <laughs> I just, I, I sort of walked in, saw him, saw my nan, saw her crying, and that's it. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I don't know what it is with Luke. He's just angry. I don't know what's made him angry. I think he lacks confidence in his own ability, and that has had a direct impact on how he behaves and how he deals with situations. OK, what do we need to do now? I'm seeing this girl. Yeah? Stay calm, you've got a good relationship with her. Yeah? Should we do that now then? Yeah, come on. I just don't really know what went wrong today, Luke. A bad day. I know, but I don't think I did anything to deserve what I got. You didn't. Luke, just come here. I've taught you so many times, Luke. Yeah? And we've always got along well. In child development, he's going to get two Cs. Yeah. He's doing really well. Academically, very comfortably in the middle of this group. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, and yeah, it all went wrong today, and I really don't know why. I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't think I could have been more reasonable, Luke. Can you see where Mrs. is coming from? Mm. And I don't think I deserve the names. What did I call you? Okay. Tell me what I called you. Under your breath as you left. And a comment about me when I was. What did I say the there back. then? I don't know, it's on the referral form, I'll have to check. Fuck me. Can I go, please? Luke? I don't yeah? want to, miss, I don't want to talk to you. I'm... I don't want to... Miss, can I go, please? Will you come back and talk to me about it, Luke, when you're calm? Please. Oh, come and see me. I'll see you, miss. Period five. Off you go. Luke, I'm not trying to make your life harder. I'm trying to make it more simple. He's, he's in bits. He's in bits. What are we going to do with him? I don't know. I'm, I'm actually quite concerned. But he clearly needs to talk to someone. Yeah. Luke is in isolation outside the head's office. He's being punished for his behaviour in Mrs. Goddard's lesson the day before. Boy, how long, how many chapters do you think it's Inside the head's office is Kieran. He's in his first year at the school, and he has an unusual request for Mr. Goddard. You cold? No, I'm just nervous. You nervous? Yeah. I made you nervous, have I? <laughs> Don't normally make people nervous, Kieran. Don't be nervous. Okay, so you're you're writing a novel. Oh, I don't know my name. Of course, I know your name. Isn't that nice. Um, okay, so you're two you're two chapters in. Yeah, and what can I do to help? Um, well, I have only been able to progress this far... Right. ..through the aid of Homework Club. Right, OK. Which has taken a considerable amount of time. I can imagine it is, yeah. I would like to request one period every one or two weeks... Right. ..to progress on my novel. you thought hard about this, haven't you? I've already spoken to him about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that you've really thought hard about it, which is fantastic. Well done. Um, Who's your English teacher? Miss King. Miss King. Have you spoken to Miss King about your novel? Yes. And what did she say? She said that she would help me publish it. Oh, fantastic. OK. OK, and right now, you're year seven, you need to focus on being in school, OK? And your novel can take a little bit longer, but right now we need to make sure you're settled and you're doing well, OK? Because we're expecting A's and A stars from 7P1 in their GCSE. That's what we're expecting. No pressure. No pressure, OK? I would be really pleased to see any of it when you've done it, OK? So when you've got anything printed off, make sure I get a copy. OK? Yeah. Well, I shall look forward to reading it then. Ciao. Good stuff. Kieran, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Lovely to see you, Kieran, all right? Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Right. How are you today? Yeah, I'm all right. Right. Clearly, Luke, we had a problem yesterday. 
I think I always show you a bit of a perspective. No, you didn't do it. I'm, I'm not saying you didn't, Miss. I was just having a bad day yesterday and it, you just picked the wrong time. We need to just... find a new strategy, okay, for when you are having a bad day so that you're not disrespectful to me or to anybody else. Yeah. Yeah? You are doing so well in that subject. Yeah? But I need you coming in with the right attitude and the right frame of mind. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Right, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, yeah? Yeah. Go upstairs. The school are also helping Liam come to terms with his challenges. Yeah, I know. Oh. It does change your life and it does change everything and you think you're ready for it and you're not you just got to try and make them as, as aware of what the challenges are going to be as possible, you know, so they're as prepared as they can possibly be. Have a seat, mate. Do you want a coffee or hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Hot chocolate? Get you warm. Give me a second. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Say to him when he comes back in, that's a nice coffee machine, because I bought it for him. I've got a flash new drinks machine, Liam. It's, it's, it's my new toy. I did someone special buy it for you, sir. Uh, <laughs> Not really, no. Oh. <laughs> Mrs Goddard has worked closely with Liam for over five years. She's also married to the head teacher, Mr Goddard. How's stuff with, how's stuff with Sky? All right. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah? How's she feeling? She's sick yet or...? Yeah. Uh, no, she ain't been sick yet. Female and hormones. You know, there are times when sometimes you think, gosh, she's gone mad. All right, so feel free to come and talk to me. I've been on that side of it. Yeah, and just say, sir, what's going on? Mrs. Goddard used to eat rubber. Promise it's you. It's true. She used to walk past the car. <laughs> no, I did not do that. You did. <gasps> I did not. Walk past the car and look at the time and go, I really want to bite it. Yeah, no, I did say it actually, but I didn't actually <laughs> do it. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't ever say the choices you you know, what's happened is the best choice, mate, I have to say, but you are where you are, aren't you? So you got you gotta deal with it now, really. You know I am. All right, if you wanna come and sort of just ask. All right, somebody who's not your granddad, and then just come and ask, because uh, it is, it's going to be a difficult time. Thanks, sir. All right, mate. Liam's had a difficult relationship with mum not being around on the scene, been brought up by granddad mainly. You know, he just wants the best for Liam so much. For more than 10 years, Liam and his brother and sister have lived with their granddad, George. Do you reckon Liam's going to be a good dad? You? <laughs> Yeah, but who's oh, going to look after? Like who's going to look after the baby in your school? Her mum, probably. Mum. Liam said he wants it to be tanned with blue eyes. <laughs> 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 that looks weird. Like, he's all she's... tanned and he's blue eyes. He looks like an he's alien. Half. Yeah. What was it like when Liam first told you? He never told me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sky's mum did. I couldn't. I just couldn't tell my granddad like. Uh, I didn't know what he was saying. I, I, fa I found it better if, like, Ray would talk to him, like, because it's Sky's mum. What did you say? Not a lot. Just, <laughs> like she said, it's happened. Got to accept it. So, no problem. Yeah. Oh. And how would you have been if you were his age and you were in the same situation? I wouldn't be sitting here like this. I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> Not with my dad. <clears throat> Different times, wasn't it, you know? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, he was all right. I thought he went mad, but he, went, he was all right with it. I was like, yeah, cool. Like, <laughs> he kind of, is he, are you talking to him about plans and stuff for the future? Like, about where you're going to live, where Sky's going to live, that kind of stuff. Have you got any thoughts on that? Um, no. Right, you're going to go and get this detention sorted out? Yep. How's everything going so far? Good. What I'm going to be doing is look at the baby in lots of detail, just making sure everything's looking normal, OK? Just need to lift your top up and just lower your trousers slightly. Just going to tuck that in there. So can you feel any movements at this stage? Yeah. OK, so in the middle of the screen, can you see a nice, strong heartbeat? Yeah. 
So I've got a nice little head here, just where your belly button is. Got a nice full stomach, which is this little black area just in there. There's a little hand coming to the screen there. Right, I'm happy as I can be. Everything structurally looks fine. Uh, were you wanting to find out what you're having today? Yeah, obviously. Can probably give you about a 95% chance of sweat, I think. I think you're having a little boy. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Oh, well Thank done. You. <laughs> it was good. The pressures of being 16, starting college, and having a newborn baby to look after as well, that would, that would split the, the strongest and most stable of relationships up, let alone one that's in its infancy still. I am feeling great. <laughs> I just feel good to find out it's a boy. But I don't mind if it's a girl, but like, Good. When it's on this earth, like, mate, I just can't wait. She can't wait. I actually can't wait. <laughs> it's 4.30. Luke is one of the only students left in the school. He's in detention with Mr Drew. Hello, English. Ah, uh, hello. He should be working, but instead he's trying on Mr Drew's Christmas tie. Well, how much longer is the film? Is that what else you can do? <laughs> Utterly, he, he just, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that I'm afraid, as I've said to him very, very clearly, he treats the whole thing with contempt. As I pointed out to him, I actually take rather great offence at his attitude. Good. It's just hopeless. It's just absolutely hopeless. It's, you know, I know. But obviously that means he's might work involved. OK. No. No, we'll keep trying, we'll keep trying. All right, thank you then. Thank you. Has it been nice to you, Mr Drew, today? He has been relatively pleasant. Relatively pleasant. I'm going to catch up with you tomorrow morning, aren't I? Tomorrow morning, I'll come and see you. Did you have a meeting? Which one? Do you want to shut the door? Hello. Hello. Also Kieran, still in school is Kieran, who's been at film club. Kieran, you're right. Oh. Did you enjoy the film? Robert and Matthew skipped a bit. So is the film supposed to be still on? It's still on. This is unfortunately exactly what happened last week, miss. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. And so who's left in the room at the moment? Robert and Matthew. He sits and watches the film nicely and other people interfere. As Mr Drew makes a call to find out what's going on, the other members of film club walk past. Uh, boys. I'm going to say sorry. Just come in. You've been at film club? Yes. What did you do to the DVD? Oh, we left it in the machine. No, what did you do to the DVD while it was playing? Did you let it play all the way through or did you skip parts? Boys, it's not a difficult question. Did you skip parts? Yeah. Why? It's the second week running you've done that. OK, would you like to tell me why? Because you don't want to go home. But nobody's making you stay. Kieran doesn't want to go home. Kieran wants to watch the DVD to the end. So why are you going film club? To watch the film? Boys, you make it sound like it's a detention. You've stayed behind after <clears throat> school because you want to. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Do you want to watch the film? OK? okay now, sure. Luke, away. Away. So, is anyone making you go to film club? No. Are you being forced to go to film club? No. So if you decide you don't like the film, should you fast forward it or should you just leave? Leave. So what do I think you should do now? Uh, leave. Go home. Is it time for Luke to leave? Yeah, it must be time. Cookie? No, I've got to go. Cool. Luke! Yeah? Hurry up. I was chatting to... Any I was chatting to him. Right, Luke, can we just clarify something with Miss Conway being present, OK? Do you have any more afternoon schools to serve? 
Are you going to be here till five o'clock on Friday? He came and told me that he had afternoon school for the rest of the week. I know. I don't know where he's got that from. He had a, he started having a go at me earlier, saying, <laughs> I stay till five on Friday. I stay till five. You can't stay till five on Friday. You just headache. You just you do it's my head in. What's it like when he does have successes and things have gone well? He's a jolly, smiley person. He'll come out and he'll come up to you and he'll smile and he'll say hello and, and you can deal with him. But then you'll try and have the same conversation 24 hours later and boom, we're off, absolutely off. So, very difficult, but you just got to, you know, play each day as, it's, as, it, as it goes with him. Bye bye, Luke. And make sure your uniform's perfect. Yeah. I actually quite like him when he's... There's something I do like about him. Yeah. It's mock exam week for all Year 11s. Right, Year 11 summative reports are going out on Friday. So, we'll see if we can make sure that everything is in place for that. I Deputy Head Mr Drew is taking the staff briefing. Um, I also need... <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest that while some of the children may well feel that I think I'm some kind of Bond villain... <laughs> <laughs> to, to quote Luke, Luke Cook in his English exam, who, when suggested to have a topic to write, told he could write about me, wrote in his English exam... There's a bloke who works at this school and he just thinks he's all it. He thinks he's a police officer or an army officer, but he just ain't and he needs to shut up. <laughs> Come on, people, a bit of fruit for the exam. If one orange makes a difference, I think two oranges could make you a genius. This morning's exam is about to begin and Mr Drew is handing out brain food. Morning, Ryan. Bit of fruit for you, exam. Bit of fruit here, people, as we arrive. Bit of fruit you taking the exam. Excellent. That could be those extra marks that make your life worthwhile. You could be sat there in that highly paid job in years to come and think it was that bit of fruit for my English exam, that's what did it. Nice bit of fruit as we go in, boys, girls. While most students are taking mocks, a few like Luke are taking the real thing. It's part of a strategy the school uses for students they're worried won't make it to the end of the year. If you are sitting against the wall and not facing forward, I will be asking you to leave the exam. Make me say it three times, Luke Cook, and I will get you out of the exam. Time is 9.28. You may start. Luke is struggling to even start his paper. Come on, Luke. Come on, have a go. Come on, but then. Because I can't, I don't try and fail. I don't try and fail. No, don't be silly. If you get at least a grade, when you feel good, you might, you might even get a G. I don't even revise things. I think Luke's struggling a bit. I've just tried to get him to. I'll try. Oh, yeah, just doesn't want to do it. No, he says I haven't revised. He says I'd rather not do it and fail than try it and fail. I said, don't be silly. Look at this kid. Great. Have you come out of your exam then? Yeah, I got kicked out. Determined to get out of it one way or another, weren't you? No, it wasn't even my fault. After being rude to an examinations officer, Luke left the exam. I should have, because I'm the one doing it. I thought, well, fuck off. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Do you like to explain to me what's going on today? Nothing. OK. You're in for a Mass GCSE exam, and you're then being rude and abusive, how am I being abusive? To Miss Beatty. How was I abusive? Let me go do it with no fuss, no hassle, and I'll sit down and do the exam. You want us as a school to take into account the difficult circumstances in your life at the moment. I have no problem with that. I am I'm not bringing that up. Excuse me. I am totally in agreement with you. Yeah. No, your I'm life not. at the moment Thank is you, quite sir, a challenge. I'm, I'm, well, yeah, I'm not bringing it up. It's, but Luke, it's part of the whole Because I don't want to do picture. the exam. It's not because my granddad died, right, sir. Hold on. It's Why are you bringing it up? Whoa. I'm leaving. Whoa. I'm leaving. Okay. Your choice. No need for my you to leave. Your choice. You brought my granddad up. No need for you to leave. <laughs> Which way? That way. Uh, 
I don't want to do the exact just because my granddad died, so there's no one needs to bring it up. He's there. If we don't in any way, shape or form, Luke, think about the difficulties that you face at the moment, that's actually more worrying. Do you think, and I'm talking about Miss BT, do you think you've dealt with that in the right way? I don't think there was any right or wrong way to deal with it. Okay. Swearing isn't the right way, Luke, is it? Yeah? That isn't the right way. I said way. piss. Things like fuck, shit, whatever. I said piss. Well, clearly, Miss Beatty. It's hardly a bad word. If she's offended by it, I'm going to have to say sorry to her. My father died when I was 16 years old, just as I started my A-levels. Therefore, I do understand the concept of losing somebody who is very close to you at a very kind of vulnerable and fragile age. But I also do not believe that you should therefore have to ask other people to suffer at the hands of somebody. Because what you're basically saying is somebody's very upset and miserable because something's happened to them, and as a result, they then are allowed to cause other people to feel like that. Well, no, they're not. They're not, and it's not necessary. Tomorrow, as far as I'm concerned, we'll move on, we'll start again, Luke, exactly like we do all the time, we'll try again. And you know that, because it's what I always do with you. But we are the adults in the situation, we are the teachers, we need you to accept our decision. I do wonder to how early our meetings might finish if we didn't drink and eat. <laughs> Honestly. OK. Options is the one yeah. I really have no idea about at all. So we'll, we'll cross that boat when we get to it. Cross that boat when we get to it. Oh, you're <laughs> great today. <laughs> Are we going to cross the bridge I'm with the boat or without the boat? Are we going to under the bridge with the boat? I guess. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Moving on. Anyway, Luke uh, Cook in Year 11. I spoke to Bex and Bex said his report was very good this week, which I find really hard to believe. Is it any general feedback on him? Well, I'm not sure when he's in a lesson. He he's that badly behaved, I have right. to be honest. I'm, alarm bells are ringing for me. I've got strong staff saying he's unteachable. He's another one whose staff will I'm not scared of. tell off yeah. and are scared of. Mm. He's like a force of nature destroying think, other I people's think we education. Need, I think we need an unteachable Luke strategy. Yeah. So when he is unteachable, what, what we, we do, do with him. And we need to give staff uh, an escape clause, release okay. valve, whatever. Yeah. 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 And we'll cross that boat when we get to it. <laughs> <laughs> are we at the boat now? We're at the boat. No. No. <laughs> Sky is in science. We get hit by quite a lot of meteorites. Is it true, sir, if that tune starts in here and you have make a wish and they come through the uh, truth? Um, <laughs> it's a lovely thought, but I can't think of any logical reason why that would happen. I'm reluctant to say no because it's quite a nice thing to think. And sometimes, Sky, if you believe in something like that, yeah. or you'll look for it and it might happen. Yeah. Might, maybe not. She's found out her due date. Yeah. Which you can if the baby comes early, it will clash with her exams. She's going to be yeah. eight months and three weeks oh, yeah, yeah. pregnant like when you get to the last exam, it's June. But they haven't planned it very well, have they? No, <laughs> not at all. Can we, um, no. we find out what and her due date is? Because, yeah. obviously, exam-wise, if her due date's too close, then we'll need to look at where she does her exams. In the birthing pool. I'm happy to support with Sky if there's any way I can. Thank you. Good. Obviously, we want to do as much as we can to make sure that by the time that you are going off in June, you've got as much done as you possibly can. So that we're I think it sounds really so important for me because I want to do well in life, have a good job. I want to stay at school, but then when everyone, like, finished school, I will be taking time off for a year and I will be starting college on September 2012. This stuff seems all very manageable. Yeah. You should be able to get all this stuff done, so then that'll keep you out of, like, any kind of after-school sessions and things yeah. like that, so you can just go home at the end of the day. Well, right, go have some lunch. <laughs> I think Sky's head is fairly well screwed on. I think she gets the fact that if she has a good education and therefore can get a good job, her child has a better life. I don't know if she gets that. Um, Liam needs a bit of reminding. He's not the most academic student in the world, but you hope that Liam works hard to make the most of the chances he's been given and we've given him a really good basis to do that. 
he's going to have a qualification in construction, qualification in painting and decorating. Right, all yours. Okay. All he really needs is to finish those courses off and get a decent reference, and he'll get a college place on one of those courses that he wants to do. The school are finding ways to help Liam succeed, but they're having a harder time with Luke. You've been given the option, and Miss Burns. Exactly, I've been given the listen, option, and I listen, want to pick an option, and she won't let. No, I won't. Me. You need to, Luke. She's you given me the option. To. I'll pick an option. She don't let me do it. Okay. So I'm not You're getting not the option, am I? Okay. Let's go and talk somewhere else. Luke, give me this. I've had concerns about how we deal with you for a while because your attitude is almost impossible at times because you won't listen and we have nowhere to go with you. We are going to fail other children because of you, OK? You can choose to engage with us at the level we want you to engage with us or you can choose not to. I can't make you. It's just certain teachers, you just need to talk to them. They know what pisses me off and they do it deliberately. So I might as well just say, yeah, <laughs> no. I'm purpose, it? No, Luke, I, you, can, you can say that's what you view. I can't argue with your view. If that's what you think, that's what you think. But there is a bit of a big chip on your shoulder, Luke, that you think people are against you, even if they're not, mm. OK? The school have reached a point where they have to make a decision about Luke's future. As the last resort before permanent exclusion, Luke has been removed from key lessons in which he is most disruptive. So in order to avoid constant conflict with him, he has less time in school, which suits him, suits us, suits everyone. How many lectures do we get in the first show? Two. Two, brilliant. One of the lessons Luke still attends is science. Second show, how many lectures can we have? Eight. Eight, brilliant, well done. Yeah, 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 brilliant, Luke. I suppose, in a way, it is a positive outcome. It's a positive outcome in that we will have created a circumstance in which he has achieved a decent set of GCSE grades. So, yeah, it's a positive outcome. <laughs> but, Luke, <laughs> what, what really makes me really chuffed is the fact you want to take a picture of that and put on your Facebook page a picture of <laughs> a, a, an atom of calcium. Where? You look at Luke Sorry. and you look at a number of others, they will get to the end of Year 11. They'll almost have killed you in the process, but they will leave with something. They may not turn around and thank you, but you'll be able to look at them and go, do you know something? I couldn't have done any more for you than I did. I stood my ground with you, and when you were out of order, I told you you were, but I also know that I made sure you got a set of results. Luke didn't turn up on results day, but he achieved seven GCSEs at A star to C, and he's off to study plumbing at college. Sky and Liam's baby boy, Kaylin, fitted in with their exam timetable, arriving late, three weeks after Sky's last GCSE. It looks like you, Sky, doesn't it? <laughs> do you think? Yeah, I do, actually. With Liam at work, Sky picked up the couple's results. Bye. Liam banked 12 GCSEs A star to G, while Sky achieved 7 A star to C. Rather than wait, she's decided to go to college this year. <laughs> this week, it's a girl's world. Carrie and Ashley are at the heart of the biggest and loudest clique in school. People actually do think we look stuck up. People really think we think we're better than anyone yeah. else, we don't. I've got a wedgie, I swear I'm allergic to them. They'd like to think they are the popular girls. Shut up! And most of them just expect boys to fall at their feet. <laughs> but when they fall out with each other, the aftershock is felt by everybody. What's the problem? He won't stop asking me questions. Don't talk to him. It's very, very time consuming. When a friendship group is broken, it, it has a huge effect on school. Massive. I don't even want to be associated with her. Everyone's going mad. <laughs> we understand what I'm saying? Yes. Good. Right. My problem with some people in the class 
is that they don't seem to remember stuff. So you need to remember the area of a circle formula, you need to remember the circumference of a circle formula. Area of a circle is? What is pi? Where did it come from, sir? Yeah. Who made up pi? I told you last lesson <laughs> where it came from. I don't really pay attention to I will explain to, to you at the break, don't worry. Oh! Yeah? Good. Right, you are going to do some practice questions on area of a sector. Fun, fun, Please fun. remember... I'll wait, Carrie, yeah? <laughs> it's not funny. James, 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 James. I'm bored of it. Carrie, you're here to work, you're here to learn maths, yeah? <laughs> I'm just really high for... I don't care. Can you do some work? I am. It's taken you nearly five minutes to open a book. Come on. When I'm messing around, I don't actually know I'm messing around until I like, get into my massive argument with the teacher or something like that. that but I do actually want to get a good grade in that and listen. How many questions of those four have you tried? The date. None. I think with Carrie, she's a very social person and she seems to think that she can talk to people across the room and I don't think she considers what it's doing to other people in the class. With Ashley, she does care about doing well. She always wants to get the questions right. She always wants the help when she's going wrong. 3.14? She wants just the one-to-one. -one. And I think sometimes she forgets there's other people in the class. I cannot write the whole thing out in my book. <laughs> OK, behind your places, please. Will you stop throwing things at me? Punching the fan. When was it that we had a massive argument? Year nine. And then we just hated each other. For like seven months, then we hated each other. Yeah, and then we never spoke. And then halfway through. We walked around each other the corridors, giving each other dirty looks, and that we hated each other. I was like, why did we even fall out? She was like, I don't know. And like, we started, started laughing. It's after school, and the pair are getting on so well that Ashley's trusting Carrie with a girl's most treasured possession. How long will my colour last? <laughs> Our exclusive colour seal conditioning gloss adds intense shine and helps seal in beautiful, natural-looking colour for up to eight weeks. If it goes wrong, I'll actually hate you. Have you ever dyed someone else's hair before? No. What? I've dyed my own hair. That's harder. It's harder to dye them I think so, anyway. <laughs> Do you think it's funny? It's got pneumonia, I think. We. What? You're putting we in my hair? Well, I think it's we. Pneumonia is we, ain't it? Oh, but it stinks. Oh, it's going right up my nose. It's dripping down my face, Carrie. Oh, crap! Well, you said to wish I would stay away because uh, it's poison. Oh, my God, it's burning my spot. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Have it be enough dry? Oh, you're so complaining. Do you reckon it's going to go ginger? No. What? No. You're lying, ain't you? Your mum's going to kill me. Back in a minute, because I'm actually dyeing my hair. Who's he? Brad. <laughs> Brad is Ashley's ex, and they sit next to each other in top set science. Guys, I want you to get your books out, use the revision guides, work your way through these things. I've got green revision sheets in the front as well, but this is independent learning. We can come around and help you individually, but you've got to be revising. I'm stuck on the first question. Fluorine has... How the hell do I know that? What, well, you can't do this? Fluorine has... 19, protons. 9 and 19 If I don't again. want you to tell me, cos you ain't going to be telling me in the test, hush your gums, blood. People think you can't be in love at 15, but you never know unless you're, like, in a long-term relationship that's, like... She was in love with brothers. No, I wasn't. Yes, she was. She was. I wasn't. Yeah, you was. I wasn't. Yeah, what are we doing, guys? Okay, you need to make sure you understand those things. Yeah, you went through them. But make some notes on them. All right. The north to the east to the west to the south. Y'all know when footsie's about. Oh, shut up! That's the only line in the word you know! I know the whole song, bro. I'm not your bruv. I think at first it weren't really that serious, but it did get more serious. And were you in love? Yeah, I would say that I was. And went on and off through, like, 
three months. And how are things now? Are you, are you on and off? Off, completely. Yeah, we talk sometimes, but as mates. Nah, blood. I'm not reminiscing the past. Rene? Really? Not anymore. Floor is at the top. Man is going to be honest, live up to the truth. But man, I can't do that. Why does Florian have nine protons, Ashley? Um, guys, next week, next week are your mocks. Yeah? yeah? Then it's Christmas holidays. Then you come back and you actually do the exam for real. Good watch, bro. I guarantee she says something just so you can hear it. Are there lots of relationships within school? Or it's better a relationship out of school, to be yeah. honest. You don't see them every day, you don't... Like, people can't shit stir it and stuff like that. So if you were given a question like this, Vinny? You are. Where you been? Um, D5, Y3, everywhere. Right, you haven't been here, though? No, I haven't been here. Take a seat. Where? Vinny is Brad's best mate and is in top set maths with Ashley and Carrie. I'm so confused. But he's less interested in geometry than Brad and Ashley's on and off relationship. Get that copied into your book as it is from there. You're going back out of Brad now, aren't you? 20 Yeah, but he's complicated. Confusing. No, but you are a boyfriend and girlfriend. No, he's a, you don't understand. Wait, so you've told him yes, so he thinks. No, so. oh my god, shut up. Shut up. You don't want to Can you ask him to shut up? Okay. What's the problem? He won't stop asking me questions. Don't talk to her. Why does she get what she wants? Because I don't want you to stop. I want you to stop asking me questions. Because if oh, you I was ask asking Fair. The trouble is, if you ask a question, she's going to get upset. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> I'll just say, I'll just say, Fed. why is Ashley saying well, that you ain't going out of it? It's nothing to do with you, so I don't really actually... Clearly, you wouldn't have told me then, innit? To so you right. don't have to get involved. You Look, stop. I've stopped asking her questions. I'm going to ask someone else something. <laughs> There's not a teacher in the country who teaches teenagers who doesn't know that feeling of, oh, God, they had her out. Right, how am I going to deal with that at the start of the lesson? No, we haven't done any of that. Do I allow them to talk about it and get it out of the way for two minutes? Do I say, right, I'm not interested? You know, this is about lessons, not about your social life, and plough through it, really. If he starts again, don't shout, yeah? You tell me if he does it again, yeah? I didn't even do anything. I asked her a question, she's like, go away from me. <laughs> What's that? Oh, my God. It does my head in, it actually does. She's obviously gave him some indication to say that she, she's, they're going back out. I'm like, Brad, what, are you going back out of Ashley? He's like, yeah, we're going back out. I ask Ashley, she's like, no, we're not going back out. Harsh. Pupils aren't happy unless there's drama. And the more drama, the better. And as long as the drama's not on them, they don't care, so they're just going to carry it on. It's lunchtime, and it's not just Vinny Ashley has to deal with. Carrie and a group of the girls are gossiping, and they've stopped talking to her. She has no idea why. But the school's virtual grapevine is buzzing. It's very simple to gather a crowd, even though it's a virtual crowd. Probably 60, 70% of all the issues that we have around kids and broken relationships between each other, at some stage, has been played out on Facebook. One, one thing comes out, and then by the end of the like, Day, week, everything, <laughs> yeah, everything. everyone knows everything. Instead of a problem being in isolation, which you can then deal with, now the problem happens in the pond and the ripples spread out. Back in a minute. Go, go, before she can get to gum. Yeah, she can get to gum outside. You just think you've got your mates, and then they start calling you their names. It's not. Not the nicest feeling in the world. <laughs> that was jokes. Everyone, it's that Slate Ashley day, I swear. Girls are very powerful and can be very nasty and bitchy. <laughs> I think especially as they get to year 10 and 11, the so group splits and isn't it about competing and challenging and girls hold the grudge. <laughs> Ashley's been isolated by some of her friends. So Ashley came to us, so we accepted her fine. I don't change my opinion on her. Still a nice girl, still my mate, so I'm going to stick by it. She has to go to a class where she doesn't know if Carrie will speak to her. 
today is your last lesson planning and producing and making your campaign. Very last one. Oh, I should work easy. Ask yourself what you and your group want to achieve by the end of the lesson. Continue planning your campaign with your group and take advantage of having the ICT room, all right? The posters look fantastic. They come out really, really well, guys. She can't take, she can't take to us while you're going She can't. I don't feel a bit sorry for her. She hasn't got anyone. She can't, she hasn't even got anyone to sit with. Wait, Shannon, everybody knows something. Is that the secret everyone knows? No, I'm not allowed to know nothing about it. You piss me off and I was like sitting there texting me from the cafe. <sighs> Is it clearly something going around about me? Don't you dare cry. It made me cry out as well because the fact is that we can trust people and they really can't. These things don't look I'm going to ask Carrie now. Carrie. Apparently, apparently in the toilet at night, I'm not sure she's talking about me. Saying what? I don't know. I'm asking. And what's all these secrecy things? Because in the cafe at lunch, it was like everybody knew something, and I didn't. Is it saying about me or something? What? Is it? Put it as what? What are you laughing at? Who is that? No. What? It's not my place to say. Is it about, can you say anything about me or not? And then I'll. Hmm? I forgot the ump with me, I was like. What? If I want to be out of order, I can be like, really horrible to people. I'll be two-faced at times, well, most of the time. But every, every girl's two-faced. There's not a girl that would be two-faced. Even if she's a ni you think she's the nicest girl, she'll still be two-faced. Well, I'm not being funny, yeah, but that whole group has got the up with me now. I ain't seen this class no more. Actually got Life outside of school is a hand grenade in a lesson. You know, when it happens and things are difficult, you know, it, it can just trash lessons. That lingering animosity, specifically between girls rather than boys, can have a massively limiting effect on what you can achieve in a lesson. All right. I'm not actually sitting in this class anymore. All right, can you step aside for a minute, please? No. Go aside for a minute. Because it looks bad on me. She was apparently was talking about me in the toilet. She's just true. She goes, have you got your me? I went, no. Who would have told her that they was, you was talking about her? No one, because it was only um... Well, then how would she know you were talking about her in the toilet? That's all I want to know, actually. Yeah. Everyone gets involved, and I'd be a hypocrite if I said not to get involved, because you do, and you do have an opinion about it. If someone tells you something, you're going to have an opinion. <laughs> I think it's quite funny. Hey, man, Carrie, come on, please. Sorry. See you later. Oh, you, you need time out of the lesson, so please take it. I don't mind you taking it, and I'll be out with you in a second. All right, I'll be out in a second. <laughs> Ashley's in the toilet. Ashley, come out. Some of the girls have stopped talking to her. What's going on? I'm not actually worried about everyone's got some problem. What do you mean? What? No, at lunch, it was like everyone has a problem with me. No one. No, everyone. people had a problem with you. It was that. Right, I need some more sexy pictures. Come on, move your body. Sex on the beach. Where? Carrie. Yeah. What? Her BBM statement. Is what? Can't fucking trust anyone. Oh, Where's Ashley? I'm going to give you another minute and I want you back in then because... But, but, OK. But you have to because I can't have you in a lesson in here. And you need to get some, some work done during this lesson. Shan, could you just cry in this pal? She's coming. Um, why have you put loads of sex pictures? Come on, move your body, sex on... <laughs> Any more news? No. Oh, that looks well good. She was crying just now. Just now? In the toilets. Talking needs to stop. Thank you. <laughs> right then, can you please 
save your work, those of you who are on computers, as part of your mock exam, all citizenship students will be given an hour to type up their evaluation. The end is near. All okay, but next week? Yeah, sure, right then. Stand behind chairs and each check computers. There's always rumours going around. How many of the rumours are true normally? That people will add little bits to it or accidentally tell it wrong, or people make it out to be worse than it actually is. So yeah, it definitely gets twisted. <laughs> If you listen to them, they're always bitching about each other. Like you get two on their own and the rest all become targets. It's when it goes behind each other's backs. That's when you realise that people don't like each other. They could bitch for England, the girls in our school. I swear we have got the worst ones sometimes. They, they entertain me with their conversations. <laughs> if there's like anything wrong, they just overreact so much. People did obviously think that it was unfair. I remember thinking that it wasn't something that your friends should do. Ashley's ex-boyfriend Brad arrives at school. He finds himself in trouble before the first bell. What's going on? Uh, nothing, bro. I'm getting screwed at by everyone. What? Uh, because I drew some fucking proper detailed cock on a table in L, Mr. Norton's room. Why would you do that? For that. <laughs> Ashley isn't in school. She's off sick. Her mum, who works in the school office, is worried. She said, no, I'm not getting up, I'm not getting up. I said, just shut up, get up. Then she got up, she got a uniform on. Oh. Yeah, I said, you've just been sick. She said, yeah, I'm not going to go back to bed. <laughs> How did they find out it was you? Because I was sitting there. Just don't admit it was you. Yeah, I know, I said that it was already there, I just did the pubes and that. Like, if you see a dick there, yeah, I just added to it. Brad, you drew the dick? Cause yeah, I know. Classes have started, and some of the staff are wondering why Ashley is absent. So she might not be here because of the rumours and things that are going around. I mean, that would put anyone off coming into school, wouldn't it? So nasty. It'll be destructive amongst all of them because they'll all start taking sides over it. Mm. A lot of it will be jealousy. Mm. Maybe, you know, fancying somebody else and they fancy you know, a girl's ass. Yeah. Let's hope it all blows over because mm. you don't want that going on, it's not nice. Makes school interesting, doesn't it? It's real life. Brad and best mate Vinny have just heard a rumour that Ashley's been linked to another boy. He's threatening to take the boy on in a fight. Okay. How are you going? Miss Conway, his head of house, Black needs to defuse the situation. What's going on then, Brad? Um, well, Ashley was telling me that. She wanted to go back with me. Mm -hmm. She was still telling me that she loved me now. Yeah. I was like, well, and she was still telling me to wait like half a month. I just feel sorry for him. Right? Yeah. It's the only one that should be hurting this her. She what? deserves to be. Brad right. don't deserve it, he ain't done nothing wrong. Who are you annoyed with? Uh, everyone. Have you had a fight with another boy over a girl before? Has that yeah. happened? Yeah, definitely. OK, my concern is, obviously, the fact that you're going to do something stupid and you've worked far too hard to let that happen. I mean, I can support you, give you some time out if you need it, in the nicest possible way. It's a girl. Yeah. Yeah? Doing it for weeks on end, telling him she still loves him and that, and then he'll go, well, if you still love me, will you go back out with me? And she'll be like, no. How does that make sense? I'm sure it makes sense somewhere along It takes a bigger man to stand up and walk away. And at the moment, you're thinking, no, I just want to batter someone. If someone's come to you and said, someone said something and I'm going to have a fight with them, you have to take stuff like that seriously, yes? Because that's their way of reporting it. So you need to investigate it and go from there. Miss Conway's taken a radical decision. 
she's isolating Brad to prevent him from having a fight. Stan from Student Support is looking after him. I think sometimes just having someone that's on their case, someone that has the time, which is what I'm afforded, the time to deal with things, the time to pick them up when they're not doing what they should be doing. And I need them to actually think I'm on their side. Right, if you do this, what's going to happen when it gets back to mum and dad? There's not a lot he could do. What's his views going to be, I mean? When he's dragged in here about you fighting in school and everything else? Because that's what happened, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't fighting in school. I take it you're, you and Ash are off and finished now? Yeah. Love's the wrong thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You've got it really bad. Yeah. And you ain't over it either, are you? No. No. Oh dear. Who are you angry at, really? Actually. No, well, it's a shame you're ugly. I thought I was just say, go and get another bird, but that ain't gonna happen, is it? But is it the end of your life? Is it the end of the old world? No. And do you know what? It is the end of year 11. Yeah. We shouldn't be in here chatting. Yeah. We should have you in lessons working. Yeah. Onwards and upwards, mate. Yeah. I think with some of them, it comes down to testosterone, and some boys become young men much earlier. And I think they push boundaries and they push boundaries that we can't let go because we've got 800 other pupils here, and then it's bedlam. And you can't ignore the correlation between behaviour and results. And those staff that haven't necessarily got teaching loads at all, the time and effort that they put in is just priceless. We wouldn't be anywhere near as successful without them, not even close. I'm not certain if we'll continue to have enough staff to do that when the government cuts kick in properly. That's a worry for the future. So for this one, I'm going to do two lots of the radius times by pi, and then divide that by four. I hate pi. Are you with me on this? Yeah. This is easy, yeah? yeah. Not always as easy as that. Books back to me from there. Brad's enforced isolation has refueled the school gossip. Because he's going mental about it. Oh, Bicky, do you know why he's isolated? Because they're trying to prevent him from going mental in lessons, because they're actually going mental about it. You know the thing about Bucky? He's going to beat up. Ow, Bicky, ow, Georgia, ow! Yeah, oh, I'm going to get a break now. Who's going to break Vinny found out, so Vinny took a beer and a dinner, and then three, we had a race of who could tell Brad first. Who's apparently he's isolated to stop him from going mental about it. Oh, I want to see Brad. I really want to talk to him. Brad said he was going to bang him. God, everyone's going back. <laughs> School gossip is also fueling the weekly senior staff meeting. I got an email from her on Wednesday, Tuesday evening, <laughs> saying, Mr. Goddard, I'm very, very concerned that my son has received an email from another student in your school, um, which shows three gay men naked in a shower, playing with each other's genitals and having sex. Could you possibly look into the matter? So Vicky in his usual way replied and said, I'm really, really sorry that's happened. I'm not in school tomorrow, but Mr. Drew will speak to you <laughs> about the gay naked men in the shower having sex. <laughs> I then had the pleasure of speaking to the first boy about it, and I said to him, did you send the email? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> did you send an email? So, I'm really sorry I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> With him stood by the printer like this. <laughs> <laughs> right, so then I, then I phoned his dad. I said, I'm really sorry to have to share what I'm about to share with you. And I, you can rest assured that I don't particularly want to talk about it as much as you probably won't want to hear about it. But this is what your son has done. And he went, oh. I said, you may have to supervise all his internet browsing for a period of time in order to ensure that he, isn't, that he isn't viewing graphic porn <laughs> on the internet in your house, in your dining room, which is where he tells me that the computer is. <laughs> The conversation turns to Ashley, who has now been off school for two days. Ashley has been off, and Sally said that she's been very well. She hadn't been eating at all, but so time, why is she, why is she time off, again. Sorry. She's off because there's Sally boyfriend doesn't... issues and things like that. No, but the other girls in that group 
Are we going to have a kick off with I other? Don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. She just probably knows what's sure. going on and is very emotional about it all yeah. anyway. Yeah. That's what the rumour mill is like. Who's her boyfriend now? Bradley Watton. Oh, she. Had, Those two are in a lot of the same classes to each other. She now needs to come to school tomorrow. It's three days since Carrie and Ashley fell out. And Ashley is still off sick. So who can tell me what a polymer is? A chain of monomers. Brilliant. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Start. Working with chemicals, there's no hidden agenda. Chemicals do what they do, and that's it. Whereas in a class, if they're not behaving, it could be for a million different reasons. What they've had for lunch, what they haven't had for lunch, what someone said to them at break, what's happening at home. A million and one things. Could be even just the, the wind. If it's a windy day, behaviour tends to be worse. Yeah. Dr Nichols is receding hairline, it's like this. This is his hairline. And then this is his face. That's a really good picture, you've got the beard. Right, and then he draws ponytail. And his side... Shh, shh. We, guys, what that means is we haven't got time to waste. <laughs> posters! How about we make some posts about polymerisation using information we've got yeah. in our books? Yes. yes, please! The books are at the front of the class. I'm going to go and get some paper for it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm so talented. Oh, my God, I'm so proud of myself. You could actually be on the catwalk, couldn't you? Oh, my God. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> no, you're shit. With Ashley's seat empty, Boyfriend Brad keeps himself amused with best mate Vinny. The other day, the sickest. But I need another pen. Yeah. Another pen. Yeah. What? What yeah. Oh, no, I'm Vinny, can you get out, please? What? Can you get out, please? Why? Because of what you're talking about, and I think you no. need to leave. I said prick, yeah. And he's and he said, what did you say? And he thought that I said that. So I still get out. I think, actually, if you both get out for the moment, OK? I'm going to say that you said someone was being sick. Yeah. Because that starts the best as well. Yeah. And I'll just be like, did you just say split? No, I'll just be like, I was talking about Ashley being sick. What did we actually do? Exactly. <laughs> uh, you just don't want us oh, to no, be no, in no. the class. Connor. How hard are you working on a scale of one to ten? I think you're working has dropped from a five or six to like a two or three. Yeah. You'll learn a lot. Is case come in? We can try it, maybe. Yeah. Try it. If they can answer these two questions I've got on the board and put them into their books. Um, I've got two questions on the board. I've spoken to several of you already. Please write an answer in your own words. No, um, and I, I text Ash Ashley. I was like, I take it you ain't coming to school tomorrow. And she was like, don't know. And Bradley? Right, when you came back in, it yes. was on the understanding you were going to be doing some work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll... How to are you? <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, moving on. And I was like, who are you going to hang around me? And I was like, what, Shelly? And she was like, yeah, and I was like, well, because she weren't slagging you off in English. You can't you even chat. Oh, no, my God. I you... I'm the only one, right, that has basically sanded her ground for her Jeez. while she hasn't been here. And oh you said God, I was slagging her off. Shit. So I don't see what it has to do with their friendship. Can we be standing behind our places, please, guys? Tuesdays after school, in the science department, we are doing revision classes. Hey! This is the time when you need to start putting in a little bit extra effort. Um, and I'll see you next time. Off you go, guys. See you later, yeah. I was wondering about black hole formation because I was laying in bed last night and I started thinking about how it could happen. Everything would collapse. Because of the great density of everything, I was thinking maybe they could form a large neutron or something. The orbits of planets and stuff coincides with the orbital of an electron in an atom. And that's the stuff that, if it doesn't scare you, you don't really understand yeah. it. It's the end of the day. Ashley's coming in for her revision class. It's her first time back since falling out with Carrie. All right. Hey, 
Oh, you look, you look alright now, actually. You look loads better. I didn't want to take my dressing gown now. I'm going. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. I don't look at that situation with Ashley and think, oh, that was terrible, you had three days off school. I mean, I do think it's terrible she had three days off school simply because she's year 11 and needs to pass her GCSEs. But that's the kind of robot side of me that says, get up, go to school, do your work, pass your GCSEs, be a success. So there has got to be a bit of a robot of me and I have got to do that. But clearly, in her mind, it was an absolute disaster. It was a terrible thing and she couldn't cope. Was that hard to come back in? Well, sort of, yeah, because it was like the whole weren't talking to hardly any of them, so... She'd be taking them in. Welcome. Hi. Grab some paper from the front. I'll go through more textbooks. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, don't bring your germs on me. I've just got better. So, what am I doing? So Bigman. We're the ill corner. What actually happened to start it? Did you have a row or something? No. I don't know. Yeah, I text you, didn't I? I was texting you and I don't know how it started. Well, I don't even know where it started. I missed like a couple of days of school and everything's different. It's really weird. Chewing gum. Can I have one, please? Okay, if you need to sit down to your detention, sit down. Okay. I'm starving. Not all after school sessions are voluntary. Carrie Schofield. Yeah. Carrie's in detention for skipping detention. So, because you obviously want to pass your art GCSE, you made sure that you went to Mr Gower's course at detention. Yeah, but I forgot. And there we are. Thank you very much. Oh, that's silly, though. Sorry, do you want me to let you fail your GCSEs? I'm not going to fail. Do you want me to let you fail? No. No, I'm... and unfortunately, when your teacher says you need to do some study work, coursework, revision work or whatever, you need to attend. Thank you. OK, next. In year 10, I just thought it was a big laugh. Like, I never took anything seriously, but now my GCSE is coming up and I, I actually think, oh, I actually need to get into college. I need to get these grades. I need to, like, start actually listening. Carrie Schofield is probably the, the most annoying of all the students, but she's the most able artistically. But it can be very frustrating when she doesn't produce the work you want her to so that she can fulfil that potential, because you've got to do the graft. If you move her in the right direction, I think she could do, you know, wonders in the future. <coughs> Carrie? Yeah? Thank you. He's distracting me. Uh, sorry, how old are you? Fifteen. Right. I forget things. As soon as I've learnt them, I forget them. Like, yesterday, I'd done maths. We'd done, like, trigonometry or whatever it was. <sighs> And then I learned how to do it and I was quite good at it. And then Steph got how to do it again. I had to look back in my book. So that's why I think I'll be so bad in tests. I won't remember it all. Can you remember what pi is? No. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. yeah. Ashley's been successful building bridges with some of the girls. Have a lovely evening. Thank you very much. Bye bye, everyone. But the rift between her and Carrie looks set to disrupt another school day. friends Ashley and Carrie haven't spoken for four days. Where are we going? going on Which one is it? We don't know where it is. The fallout continues to be a disruption for the entire group. Fuck off. Oh, I hate you. You're Fuck scared. Off. Coming from... Oh, coming head. from you. Is it this one or the other one? What? That's just called us a scare. Who? She just said coming from. Is she about me? She said... She said coming from... She said coming from Skettlefang. Coming from the skip. Coming from the skip. Ashley goes to see Miss Conway for advice. I'm listening. Then I got an abusive text again saying that I called Carrie a skip and then went coming from you. Um, I was like, actually, Shelley called me a skip. Then the other day, when I was off school, I got abusive texts, abusive phone calls, and I said, can you stop ringing me? I was like, can you not talk to me? If you've got nothing else to say to me, can you not talk to me? 
I was getting all this abuse when I was up ill. I was like, I'm trying to sleep. Please leave me alone. Oh, yeah. What's happening? Do, do you want us to step in and do anything or say anything? I don't know because. I think you should. I think they all need to be taught a lesson. Say it. I think it's out of order. Have How you, would they like but, if they had no friends? But have you. Yeah, friends. You're really not ill. I said, I'm not ill, no. I said, I'm not ill. I'm not being sick or nothing, no. I was like, well, do you want to leave me alone now? Because I ain't got answer none of your questions. But, um... I think whereas in the past maybe it was easier as a kid to hide and to be out of contact, even when kids aren't going out to play with their mates, they're still on their mobile phone all day, they're still on the computer with MSN, there's no, there's no hiding escape. Now, in one respect, great. A very good connected up world. They live like it all the time. But I think that's to do with the pressure. I think there is no place to hide as such. Actually, can you pass my biscuit thing on top of there? There? Yeah. It's up to you how we deal with it. We can deal with it. We can sit you all down, go from there. It, it's your choice. I think girls get everyone involved. The more, the more involved, the better. And they'll just constantly talk about it. Talk and talk and talk and talk about it until everyone's talking about it. And it'd be far easier if they just had a conversation themselves. With no resolution in sight, Ashley heads off to her lesson. It's maths with Carrie. Okay, so this is linked to what we did last lesson. If you weren't here last lesson, you either can talk to someone around you or you can try and rely on your knowledge. We listen, please. We listen then, please. Excellent. Right. This question is very similar to what we were doing last lesson. Diameter of a semicircle. So I would suggest that you draw a semicircle. That's obviously the diameter of it. 1.5 meters across. Hurt my brain. I don't need a comment. I'm here to help you. Yeah. If you don't want me to help you, you can go. I didn't say anything about you. You don't need to make a comment. I told you that. Well, I don't get this at all, and I'm not getting any help. Pay attention to me. I you am might pay attention. get some help. I am paying attention. I'm saying to these, I don't get it because I don't understand a clue what pi is. I thank you, E. <laughs> I wouldn't want to just say, right, that's it, you're out. I wouldn't want to do that to her because at the end of the day, she, she got the ability to do well. The conversation's gone along the lines of, if you do the right thing, if you let me teach you, you can get a B. And I think, I think she knows that, but... I, at the moment, I think she's struggling to realise what she needs to do. Finished? Oh, I hate maths. Obviously, if you need extra help, you can stay behind. I can give you some extra help on it. I want you... I'm going to die. ..on Monday to know that formula. Because if you don't know that formula, I'm not going to be very happy. What is the formula for the area of a circle? Five times R squared. The side row go. It's break and Carrie heads off to the cafe with a group of the girls. Without realising what she's doing, Ashley joins the same queue. I don't want to be associated with her. What's going on? No one's going to be there. Becky, go, come get it through from the other cafe and then we'll go in here. Down there. What, in the other cafe? Ashley is still being ignored by Carrie and some of the girls. How are you doing? Um, uh, Have a seat, come on. Brad has calmed down. He texted me last night saying, What's going on between us? And he was like, um, uh, To be honest, I don't want to fight. You're not going to do anything stupid, though, are you? Yeah. And I think he needs to know that as well, yeah. because he's probably walking around school kind of thinking, I've got to watch my back. Yeah. Brad could be there, Vinny could be there. It's not yeah. worth it, Brad. Yeah? yeah. Miss Conway makes me feel like there's always somewhere to go when I'm angry or upset or whatever. Just made me realise how much it distracts me from school. So... I weren't paying attention to lessons because of how I felt. All right, then. Yeah. Off you go. Grab that. Brad has put the disruption to one side. 
Harry. Yes. Go to the side because you're sitting there chatting and gossiping with Amy. The same is not true of the girls, who are still allowing the split to disrupt their GCSEs. It's fine with two people falling out. What's not fine is when other people, other people join in. That's that's when it becomes the problem. I reckon it'll just sort itself out. The school is less convinced. Carrie is summoned from one of her classes. Um, I'm the library girls. And the two girls are brought together. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. Obviously, mm -hmm. all this friendship thing, but I think it's got to be sorted because we don't want another week of last week, do we? No. All right, I'm going to give five minutes, but just remember, friends always have arguments and make up, right? It was like saying in the past, and I heard about it, and I thought it was true, and it wasn't, but I just had a massive argument with Ashley. Once I've calmed myself down, I should be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, really, and then just be like, I, I don't know, I don't really apologise, but I just, I don't think I apologised to her. I think I said sorry for spreading loads of stuff. We just laugh about it now, but... What do you say now, then, when you laugh about it? Just how silly it was and pathetic it was. That's what I'm like. like I'd have, if I fell out with someone, I'd talk to him and, like, I'd literally be fine with him. Like, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't go gradually, like, talking to him. I'd just be like, one minute we fell out and one minute we're fine. I just remember seeing Ashley and Carrie together and I was just like, yeah, that lasted long, didn't it? It's like the stuff they did to Ashley was really kind of harsh, but yet she took them back as her best mates, which I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> just go in school go and start talking. And then yeah. you talk about something, you that laugh and then just goes on from there, really. Yeah. Stuck mm. with it now, unfortunately. Love you. It has a huge effect on school, massive, but often short-lived. It's a hand grenade that goes off and then the dust settles, sometimes the same day, sometimes a week, sometimes a month, but it does settle because we as adults can stand back from it and say, this is just part of growing up, you know. You fall out, you find out who your friends are, you, you deal with it and you move on. And as adults, you can see that. It's all-consuming and devastating if you're 15 and inside it, though. Come on, give out. It's results day. Ashley achieved nine GCSEs at A star to C. And in true best friend style, Carrie did exactly the same. Yeah, I could have done better if I tried harder, but I'm happy anyway, so... Despite being unable to remember what pi is, she got a C in maths. <laughs> and the girls are as close as ever. You've got B in This is, for Year 11, the very beginning of the very end. This week, thoughts turn to leaving school. You say you want to join the army. You wouldn't last two minutes. You wouldn't even get in Vin because of your attitude. I'm going home. And the school's ability to reach its targets is challenged by two very different students. Check and see if your multiplications are correct. Uh, so, uh, no, let me, wait, let, me, let me try, let me try, let me try, let me try. 15 year old Ryan, a recent arrival to the school, has Asperger's. One day I like, I can marry and have kids. Someone think I'm weird, others think I'm extraordinary. And I have a big imagination. Very big. Whoa. And Vinny, a troubled teen who has just agreed to go into temporary care. The day always goes good until someone says something I don't like or tries to get me in trouble. How can Mr Goddard prepare Vinny? That's sick. Ryan. Congratulations, take that home. And the rest of year 11 for life beyond the school gate. Have a go, good luck, guys. That's the thing. I mean, you never know what happens in the future.
Everyone make sure their coats are off, their scarves are off, their gloves are off. This is really complicated stuff that we're doing here. It's probably the hardest thing you're doing in chemistry. But I just don't even got it right, so I'm a OK. Can somebody shut the door at the back of this crucible of learning? There we go. Hey. A little pop test. The majority of the kids in the school do the right thing, day in, day out. But some take, you know, disproportionate amounts of your time. And Vinny has, without a shadow of a doubt. Over the past two years, Vinny's behaviour has worsened considerably. After a recent fallout with his mum, they both agreed he should go into voluntary care. Now he's living in a children's home 20 miles from friends, family and school. We could take an easy option with Vinny. I mean, you know, he could have been educated at his children's home. He could have not been here at all. We could have just said, OK, we won't chase him. But then, you know, that's not what I'm in the job for. He's as important as every other young person. I'm then going to give you two lessons to type up your introduction for, slash setting the scene, the part that's worth 10 marks, all right? Right then. Amy, back down. I've already asked. You've spoken about you want to reduce the voting age, so bring your chair around, discuss. Bring yourself back into the frame of mind where you left off last time. All right? You can pay taxes to the government and you can work full time. You can work full time? Wait, I want to get self-employed under the age of 16, but I don't think I can, can you? Self-employed? Yeah. Oh, Labouring. No, you can only be oh. <laughs> well, Why would you want to do that anyway? There's no point in leaving school. Because it's 200 pounds a week. Yeah. For a 15 year old, as if that is sick. Yeah. 800 pounds a month. You're so sick here when you ain't got any grades and you can't even get a decent job, and then 200 pounds a week ain't even that much when you're older. Yeah, when you're older. Then you earn enough grades. Yeah, but I'll, I'll go to college. And then yeah, but I'm joining the army when I'm 16. You'll still need grades to go to the army. It's not just, oh, yeah, I want to Hey, what else can you do at the age of 16? Drop out of school. The likelihood of us losing him is very, very high. He feels he's outgrown school. He can't see any reward. All he can see is headache. I think that's a massive barrier at the moment. Because he, I don't think he can see the benefit, whereas he goes to work, end of the week, he gets some wages. School, end of the week, what does he get? Nothing. Yes, he gets an education, but he's not going to realise that till however many years down the line. Miss Conway is Vinnie's head of house, and she's responsible for his discipline while he's in school. Vinnie's been caught smoking, but he wants to do his detention during his lunch break rather than at the end of the day. Hi, Miss. Can I do half our detention now? Vinny's just arrived. He's literally just walked in and said he wanted to do some of his detention now, as opposed to after school. Right. Um, he's got detention. He's got detention after school, as far as I'm concerned. I hear that, so it'll be after school instead. All right then. Yep. Yeah. Right. Cheers. Bye. Right. Vinny. I'm not doing it. Mr. Goddard has said you need to do it after school. Simple. Don't be disappointed when I don't turn up after school because I will not be there. Well, I'll have that conversation with Mr. Goddard now then. He was bad man for you. Really? Yeah, I think it was in Stan's office, so but the door was open and I walked past and I heard him say, She's not she's got me in trouble again like this. Oh I'm, I don't care. So. You know, I know, but I want to let you know. Oh yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Just email Vic. What did he say? He doesn't care, he's not doing it. Yeah. You hear and you read about and you see reports about institutionalising young people, you know, what the life chances of those in care are, and there's an increased susceptibility. His lens on life is different now. And it's, it's not for the better, I don't think. I, I'd, I'd prefer... Oh, miss. Okay. I don't want to sit down and have a chat. Billy, I have a school to run. I have standards I have to maintain. And regardless of your home situation, which is horrible and I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, let alone somebody I like as much as I like you, I still have those standards I've got to keep up. You have to bend to our rules, not us bend to yours. That's what I'm saying, why can't I just stay at that place? I mean, there's a classroom now to get full there. You think that a one-to-one -one with a non-specialist teacher is going to get you the grades you're capable of? Yeah. Well, you're wrong. School unlocks your future, a better future. 
How does it unlock my future? Because you get on the course of the right level, you get the job with the right standard, and you get the life of the right ability for you. What else is unlocking a good future for you, Vinny? Nothing. Neither school. No, that's not true. You can't see it, but that's Stay not true. Stay here and get unnecessary headache and... You get unnecessary headache, in your opinion, because you don't behave. I do feel sorry for Vinny, but I don't feel that sorry for you, because you're still choosing not to behave the right way. I don't want you to sit there and feel sorry for me. I'm going to get me out of the place I'm in just because you, you're sympathetic towards me. No, it won't. You're right. What will get you out of the place you're in is hard work. Well, hard work in school will let me go on. What, to your mum's? No, that's your damaged relationship, Vinny. Really. Which you've caused damage to, not me. Right, you'd have to rub it in. No, I'm not rubbing it in. That's a, that's a bare fact, Philly. This is a horrible hurdle for you to get over, but it'll make you a man. Really, go and have a seat outside, please. Or whatever you choose to do. The self destruct button now of actually, if I can push people away, they'll all leave me alone. Yeah, exactly. Because that's, that's, that's what he's thinking. Yeah. That's what his life is. You know, if I'm nasty enough, if I'm horrible enough, if I'm rude yeah. enough, people just leave me alone and they push, they kick me out. Yeah. How long do you keep the bell going? I think it depends how long you are between bruises, really. If the bruises are still fairly recent, then they're sore. And then wiping the slate clean is quite difficult. Um, you know, because that's what this job is. It's a series of getting bruises. At times, yeah. it's tough, but... I'll, I'll go Don't let it get too much. No, okay? no. If it gets to the yeah. stage where you're just like, Vic, you know, you need to come and see me. I can't do this because I've got too many other things to do and he's taking all my time. He does take up a lot of time. Yeah, of course he does. My biggest issue is I need to be aware of other people's ability to take those bruises. You know, Bex, for instance, who's dealt with him a lot, how much capacity has she got to keep taking those knocks? And I think that's, a, that's the most difficult aspect of it. I'm not going to give in. And um, he will give in before we give in, and we know that. Yeah. But it may need a bit of tag team if it's going to get. No, definitely. You know, that's fine. Your call is important to us and we'll be answered as soon as possible. And have you got your report on you? Yeah. No rush. These people aren't going to answer the phone. Hours. Thank you for your patience. Your call is important, important to, to us. us. We'll be answered as soon as possible. But not important enough that you can answer it. I'm not like other people. I mean, someone think I'm weird, others think I'm extraordinary. Not, 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 not extraordinary as in super, as in super powered, no. Uh, extraordinary as in, as in you know, different from other people. I went to a few doctor's appointments. At first they thought it was autism. Then when I went to the next appointment, they said I was Asperger's. Something I'm born with makes you sort of different, but to you, but to you, it's just normal. It's how you think. And I have a big imagination, very big. Ryan joined the school just over a year ago. Before this, he lived in Spain, where as a child with Asperger's, he was held back in primary school. Here we go. Check and see if your multiplications are correct, guys. With the help of his teaching assistant, he studies GCSEs, just like everyone else. Ryan, what's missing? Uh, uh, what's missing? Uh, so, so, uh, no, wait, let me, let me try, let me try, let me try, let me try. I am um, eight times. What's eight times eight by the 56? Eight times seven. Yeah, so what do I have to do to, the, to this number? 49. Perfect, well done. Yeah, All right, guys, let's pack away. Philosophically and ethically, I think it's absolutely right for someone like Ryan to be in a mainstream school. He's not going to go and get some special job, so why does he need to go to a special school? Mr. Drew. Hello. How was Pets Corner? It was fine, sir, thank you. What animals do they have at Pets Corner, Ryan? I've never been... Uh, barn animals. Oh, right, OK. Also, a few exotic animals. Right, what? A very small frog. Very small frog. Was it an exciting coloured frog? Because I saw a photo of some extremely bizarrely red and white and black and orange coloured frog that looked like somebody had painted some kind of piece of modern art all over it. No, no. No. I have no idea where it came no, from. No, it's, no it's a, it was very small and white. 
Looks like it was just been born or something. Oh, good. OK. Ryan, I hope you have a joyous afternoon doing whatever it is you are doing. And I'll see you on Monday. Thank you, sir. All right, Ryan, no problem. Ryan has very specific needs in some subjects and not in others. Speak Spanish, for instance. What a fantastic skill. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ryan. Hola. Hi. Hi. We have a very, very inclusive school. When a young person comes around that's got issues that they're going to have to cope with throughout their lives, you know, we, we let them know that we'll help them cope with it when they're here. See you, Max. Hey, see you. As well as helping Ryan achieve the best possible grades, Mr Goddard wants to ensure that he has the social skills to cope in the outside world. Come in, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Uh, hello, sir. How are you doing? All right? Uh, nice yeah. to see you. Have a seat. Right, Ryan, when you leave school, when you're out shopping and, and out around college, there'll be people that don't know you and that you don't know them. So, if you look at this picture here, can you see what they're doing? That's stealing. That's right, that's stealing. Now, if that girl noticed it and went straight to that person, what could happen? She could get very unpopular. It's more than that. What if that person wasn't a very nice person? Do you think that girl would be in danger? Yeah. She would. And it's going to be the same with you, Ryan. We don't want you to go up to someone that you don't know and you might be in a position of danger. OK? Though she could tell the staff. You're absolutely right. Whenever you see anything that you think is not right, I want you to tell the staff. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll wait for this bit, Mrs Scott. You can do your bit and I'll have an interlude. Well, I remember I spoke to you about um, Jack Petrie Awards, yeah. yeah? That's why Mrs Scott's here, OK? <laughs> Mrs Scott will tell you why she nominated you. Ryan, I nominated you because when you came here, you were quite bewildered at first, but you really have settled in well, and I really think you have been a great success, so that's why I put you forward for the Jack Petty Award. Is that all right? Yeah, very nice. Good. You asked me when I spoke about one of my heroes, remember that in assembly last year? Yeah. And you came up to me after that assembly and said, sir, do you think I'll be one of your heroes one day? And like I said, Ryan, you're already one of my heroes, OK, because you come here and you're so positive, and it's fantastic that somebody else has seen that too. There's only... Eight students this year will get an award, and you're one of those eight. Proud of you. All right? Yes, yes Good job. Right. Well done. Someone understands, like, they're like, oh, he's not into care. He must be hoping, you know? I'm stressed. I've got people telling me when I can come down and see my mum, or when I can't come down and okay. see my mum. Let's, let's, let, 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 let's just have, let's have the conversation in, in thingy. As a consequence of living in the children's home, Vinny sees little of friends and family, and it's affecting him in school. He's changed so much. He can have days where he can come in, and you can just tell by looking at Vinny if he's going to have a good day or a bad day. I think there's so many emotions there and so many different things going on that he just doesn't know how to deal with it. How do you feel about the situation? One, I live in a complete shithole, 20 miles down the road, where I, it ain't as if I can just walk down the road and see my mum, see my girlfriend. No, I've got people telling me when they can give me a lift to go see my family, when I can't see my family. A couple of weeks ago, you were adamant, I don't want to be home, I want to go into care. I thought you'd just be there for a week or something to get, and then to give my own put person to place and then go back there, but no, I've got to stay there for four months. If I'm honest, you're not going to like this, your behaviour has resulted in this happening. Would you agree or disagree? Disagree. Why has Mum turned around and said that she can't have you at home at the moment? Because we had a massive argument. OK. Was that the first massive argument? No. Yeah, it takes two to argue, it ain't just OK, but at the end of the day, do you listen to her? Just because she's a mum don't mean she's always right. But you're under her roof and you should follow her rules and stuff. If you and your mum didn't argue, this probably wouldn't be happening, would it? Because at the end of the day, your mum can't cope, Vin. There's only so much people can take. And that's what's going to happen in school. I don't want that to happen, but... Again, the ball's in your court. It's your choice. Just put your shoes on, then. 
this is a young person that I showed around the school as a year six of his mum and dad, you know, and he's now towards the end of his career with us and his behaviour is forced him down this path, but is it a path that he can get out of? You know, is it something that he can he can change and, and still leave lead the life that he, he's capable of? He's got to invest some time and effort. And if I'm honest, how much revision is Vinny ever going to do in a children's home? Well, none. So whatever his revision he's going to get, whatever learning he's going to have, it's going to be between 8.45 and 3.20. Aware they are in a race to keep Vinny engaged with school, Mr Goddard and his deputy, Mr Drew, have decided to take radical action. Can you have a conversation with him at the moment in which you say to him that we are currently... Looking. ..having a significant review of all his current GCSE courses with a mind to minimising what... So not minimising what he passes, to ensuring that his focus is on ones he is going to pass. Yeah. Um, Abby is very, very clear that he is not going to pass history anymore. The decision has been made to recognise the reality of the situation and not try to push any more than, than you, basically, are capable of achieving. Because at the end of the day, it is you. And I do yeah. recognise that. Yeah. Hey, Vin. OK. Listen, 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 listen. Don't start, all right? Don't give me any attitudes. Don't, don't give me any of your abuse. You've got that look in your eye. OK, this is the plan. It's not set in stone at the moment. So, as far as we're concerned, I, I think you're not going to be doing history. I think you're not going to be doing RM. So it's going to be math, science, English, ICT and BTEC. And that's the, in hope that you're going to pass all these and that's to alleviate the pressure on you. OK, that okay. sounds good. Okay. My main focus at the moment is to try and get him in next week. He's got an exam on Monday and Wednesday. So we need to get him in for them to exam because it's English. Why is that so important now to get to get him into the exams for next week? Um, because at least if he sits down and takes it, he's going to leave school with something, and we're better off pushing for it now. As in, as because later on in June or July, we could have lost him completely. And I'll say to her if she minds. Pushing Vinny to pass his English GCSE six months early puts pressure on the head of department, Miss Bird. With just days to go before the exam, she fears for his chances. I had to talk about Vinny because Vic's not here to do it. Mm. <laughs> um, he's coming off timetable for the next three days. That's nice for him. Being based in the access centre. We had a big discussion about it yesterday. He fails English. That That's causes impossible. a lot of problems. <laughs> I can't say this is my favourite response. Okay. <laughs> but can I just stop you there? I agree, and you can do it. You don't need to explain anymore. No, I wasn't asking for your agreement. Vic's already made the decision. Oh, I could. But obviously, you all need to know that Vinny should be in the access centre. I will put a member of staff or some support with him as much as possible. Is he just not done his coursework? Coursework's fine. He's sailing through. He's got an A in speaking and listening, and he's got a top C in his written coursework. Problem is, his writing is crap. Writing is half of the exam. So he has to do well in the other sections, mm. or he won't get a C in English. When his results are published, they're not going to put, oh, yeah, but this kid's OK, because he had this problem or this problem. They're not going to put that. They're not going to change your judgment as a school. And to be honest with you, I don't really have a problem with that. I absolutely believe schools should be held accountable for what they do. And you shouldn't just say, oh, kid's going through a troubled time and therefore you're going to give up on him, because it would be so easy to do so. Vinny has been sent to the Student Support Centre to cram for his English exam. That Vin? Do you think about your GCSEs? Yeah. I have to. I've... Otherwise, I ain't going to get a good job. In year 11, you're a big fish in a small pond, but then you're going to go out there and be a small fish in a massive pond, and everyone's going to be fighting for the same sort of things, like jobs, money, so you've got to go out there and try and get them why does like 10,000 people trying to get him at the same time? And what grades would you like to get? B's or A's. Do you think you're doing enough work to get those results? No. Probably C's or D's at the moment. I've got to butt my ideas up.
you may begin. Mr Goddard has called an assembly. While Vinny was sitting his English and Maths exams, most of Year 11 were sitting mock papers. Right. These results will indicate how the year as a whole are performing. Oh, sorry. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Right. This is, for certainly for Year 11, the very beginning of the very end. And today is the first chance for you to get a real clear indication of exactly where you are. I know that one, one or two of you, maybe more of that, will open your results and force out a laugh. <laughs> Look what I got. But deep inside, that's not the case. Funding for post-16 education is being slashed. It's half the money at best in some places. You've got it the toughest I've known in my teaching career. So you can sit here thinking, yeah, I'll have a laugh at a joke, I didn't do any work and I got rubbish results, ha, ha, ha. What are you going to do in the summer when ha, ha, ha means you don't get a college place? Because you won't walk into a job, because there aren't jobs out there. So if you're not taking it seriously at this point, you better start. Mohammy, have a go, Linda Way. Good luck, guys. I ain't got my pen. I've got your pen, because I know how organised you are. How are you feeling? Nervous for some reason. Surprised. Happy? Satisfied. Satisfied. No, English got an F. Can I make a little suggestion? Start doing your homework. You will find your grades go up. English language. Oh, I've got a C. That's sick. Are you impressed? Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get a C. I thought I was going to get a D or something. Okay. Anyway. You switch on, you sort your maths out. That's doable. Science is doable. BTEC sport. That's five GCSEs. A to C. Back in September, we thought there'd be no hope. So I'm hoping this is going to give you a kick in the right direction. You need to go and have a conversation with a member of staff because guaranteed you would not have got it without her. And Ms. She, Bird. she's dying to have a conversation with you. I got a C. <laughs> you passed. <laughs> Are you tickled? Yeah. But you made my year. You did. I said to Mr. Goddard today that was one of the biggest uh, moments of my career, I think. Thank you, Miss. Yeah, you're very welcome, Thank honey. You. It's my pleasure. It's Thank my you. Pleasure. Now that's the payback. You know, when you see a kid open an envelope and they're pleasantly surprised. Man. One moment of a big grin on their face is worth it. I'm gonna find my mum and tell her and she'll be over the moon, trust me. And she'll just say, I told you so, because she's always told me I can do it, but. I always say, no, I can't. My gut feeling is probably a little bit higher than we were last year, but not far off. Yeah. The local authority have set the school a target for 46% of their students to achieve five GCSEs, A star to C, including English and Maths. C's across the board, APS group four. I think she'll be fine. So she's just a watcher. With the mock results now collated, Mr Goddard and his team can see which pupils are on track to help them reach that target and which pupils need more of a push. Well, the, the wonderful Vinnie Hunter, seeing his English, very, very good response to his um, real results today from Birdie. Mm. He said he, he was good with Birdie's Yeah, he was he really good. He made the right noises yeah. and, and with Bex as well. He seems to be focused. Yeah. Maths obviously got a D. That's such a pattern. <sighs> If you're right and he listens to this English result and stuff and he knows he can do it, he got a D yeah, yeah. based on a Nothing. hellish term yeah, yeah. when he was totally demotivated and defocused. So if he can be kept going till the re close to the end, he probably will get a C. Yeah. Defocused? Yeah. Are you happy with defocused, Mr. Drew? I'd like to ask that for clarification. Defocused, you're happy with it. You're going to yes. stick with defocused? <laughs> yes. You don't wish to top trumpet with anything else that's actually an English word? <laughs> no. Defocused. I'm happy with that word. <laughs> okay. Um, maths, though, obviously, is whatever sort we can give him maths is going to be key in it. But hopefully he'll be all right. Basically, globally, not a disaster, but with some work to do, yeah? <laughs> OK, so, question 3 on 41E, it says... X and Y are two geometrically similar solid shapes. Gives you area for... Now that Vinny has a C in English, Mr Goddard hopes he will be spurred on to greater efforts. 
and Vinny has another incentive to stay in school. There's a prom to celebrate the end of year 11, but to be able to go, his behaviour and attendance must improve significantly. I spoke to Vinny at the end of last term and said to him, if I asked any member of staff to take a bet with me that you'll be your leavers prom, they wouldn't take it. And Vinny said, I'll take that bet, sir. What have you done? Yeah, done that one? Yeah. Do you reckon you're going to get to the prom? I like to think I am, hopefully, because I ain't got to pay for my ticket if I get there. Why is that? Mr Goddard's going to pay for it for me, if I make it, because he's so adamant that I'm going to get kicked out of school before prom. So I've got to prove to him that I can stay in the school and then he'll pay for my prom ticket. OK, a couple more minutes. What do you want me to ask you? How do you think you'll feel that day when you show for driven to the prom or whatever? Proud of myself and good about myself because I walk in thinking all oh, you lot thought I weren't going to be here, but look, I am here. Are you reading there, Ryan? I've heard the Odyssey. Is it a ship? Uh, Are you thinking of going to the prom? Uh, prom? Uh, well... <laughs> but it's not something, I, it's not something I, I really think about, really. I mean, I'm think, I think you have to dance with... girl. Not so bad. No, apart from getting extremely nervous. If you make a mistake, you don't know if she'll like you or not. That's something new to me, actually. I, mean, I don't know if a girl will like me or not. What would you do? I think i definitely go, so I think you should go. What would you do, Grace? I think you should go as well, Ryan. <laughs> Like this. Right. Yeah. It's Thursday morning, and Vinny's had his hair cut in a style which is banned by the school. Who did it? Some time just came up. So, Vinny, it states clearly that pupils are not allowed tram lines and stuff like that. I think so it's fair. OK, and you're entitled to your opinion, but the, the rule isn't going to go away. Give me strength. You don't need it, you just need patience. I think I am quite patient. You are, yes, you are patient. No, what I'm saying is that with Vinny, I think it's very ambitious to still be playing for a win when the most we're likely to get by the end of his schooling is a score draw. Yeah. There's certain rules that you have to go with. When are you going to start taking responsibility? You say you want to join the army. You wouldn't last two minutes. You wouldn't even get in, Vin, because of your attitude. I'm going on. But, Vinny, that, that's the... Vinny, you've got to remember, it will have a direct impact upon you. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care. OK, but you will care and you should care. I don't and I won't. But Vinny, 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 just let me know so I know. So you're telling me... That I'm not coming to school anymore. Ever again? Ever again. OK, what are you going to achieve? Nothing. OK, and but you're that happy with that? Yeah, really, that doesn't bother me. I'll quite happily achieve nothing. You've got so much potential in so many ways. Oh, just grow some balls, Vinny, and say, you know what? I don't agree with you, but I'm going to step up and just do it, oh, just God. to shut you up. OK, so I'm Vinny Hunter out, please. He's going by the wayside, isn't he? Yeah. That's it, come and take yourself a bit, huh? Right, Ryan, as you know, this is um, a transitional review. That means moving on, which is to talk about um, what you're going to do when you leave school. So this is all about me. So do you want to share this with Mum? Go on, then. What have you written? It'll be you interesting, written actually. People like my sense of humour. Mm-hmm. I'm good at drawing and building models. Yep, I agree with all of that. I need to be careful to have good road safety and and to avoid drug smoking and Also, I don't go on a rampage. <laughs> we don't okay. want that, do we, No, Ryan? we really don't, we want, don't you want you rampaging rampage. anyway. <laughs> OK. I like to live a normal life. What? One day, I like, 
they can marry and have kids. Mm -hmm. You talked to them a lot then, didn't you? About what makes you tick and what you want. Tick, not clock, but that is. OK. <laughs> what makes you you? Yes? I don't really know how I will feel when I leave school. Well, I like to sit, be seen as mature, but getting a job and and working hard, earning your own money, and trying to take care of yourself and, and paying and paying the bills is something I'm I'm a bit worried about. I mean, I, mean, I have no idea what my life's going to turn out. You have done brilliantly. Yeah. And you're happy here, aren't you? Yeah, and I wish I could stay longer. Yeah. Just going to have to be prepared for it, like the other kids. I mean, they'll have to be prepared for anything. It's my, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Like, and he absolutely adores Mr. Goddard. He makes, doesn't want to move on, really. This makes me smile when I see him, so you can't knock <laughs> that, can you? There's not many people who make me smile when I see him, so <laughs> I have to make the most of it. <laughs> Ben, you just pause what you're doing a sec. Yeah. Is that all right? Just 30 seconds, literally 30 seconds. How's your weekend? It's all right, I suppose. Yeah? Just, I cannot understand. You know that we were going to react to that. Yeah, I know. And that was just bloody mindedness. I don't know why I got it done. I was in the barber's chair and he was just like, I'll do you a line for a tenner. And I was like, go on in. And he just done it. When you said, yeah, OK, you knew that we were gonna, not going to take that. Yeah, I know. Make better choices, Vin. This I shouldn't will. be a battle. We are trying to deliver you a future. That's all we're trying to do, all right? Yeah. And you're stopping us. What a rubbish decision that was. All right. As punishment for his tramline, Vinny's in isolation outside Mr Goddard's office. But instead, he's decided to pay a visit to his friend Joe, also in isolation and struggling with his English homework. Fucking some blind geezer. Yeah. Shit. My first paragraph is on the content of the extract. Language techniques like rhetorical questions. That's why do they use rhetorical questions? They got to a... make you think about it. Is that why? Yeah, that's like if me saying to you, well, do you want to succeed in life and then walk off? Do you want to do this stuff or just want to be a bum, basically? How about windsurfing, kite surfing, or even kite surfing? Yeah. How about it, mate? <laughs> but that's a standard question, isn't it? No, no that question is needs an answer provided. That's either yes or no. Yeah, I'll do a bit of windsurfing. Well, no, nah, it's not for me, mate. You know I'm a cup of tea. Yeah, there's no <laughs> fucking rhetorical question. Is yeah, it? it's a rhetorical question because it's written. You ain't no, gonna write on it back. Bird. Right, miss. It's escaped. You spit the table. No. <laughs> No. Hallelujah. As the school year continues, Vinny's behaviour shows no sign of improvement. Why didn't you come in yesterday? His behaviour now is worse than it was before he went into care. His attendance at school is worse than it was before he went into care. He's true into today. He was a tie yesterday. Was he? Five. What? There's a bit of a harder edge to Vinny now that I hadn't seen previously. His automatic thing is just to walk off. Mm. Yeah. I don't yeah. get so frustrated. See yeah. you later, sir. There was always a little boy in there. It's hard to see the little boy now. I think I've done everything I possibly can to support you. He's one of the students that you have sort of invested some of yourself in. Yeah. So how are you feeling about that at the minute and how do you think you're going to feel come the end of the year? Now, disappointed. End of the year, disappointed. It won't change because he hasn't reached his potential. He fails, we fail. You know, has he failed to reach his potential? Yeah. It's a no fail organisation. You know, if they fail, it's our fault. It's Leavers Day. All of the students who have completed the school year are here. We officially mark the start of their exam period. 
It's a day where they come in in their own clothing. We, we give them sort of a, a leave certificate. Alex Waits. We do see this as a sort of rite of passage. We do see that they have to earn this today with staff telling them how they feel and I'm being human about it. You're my hero. There you go. You too, sir. There you go. Sit down, buddy. You know, all these people who've we've battled to get into school for the last four and a half years cry because they're leaving. This school is about you doing the best you possibly can. Doesn't matter what your background is, how much money your parents have got, you can still be the best you can be. But that takes work. And you are sitting here because you've earned the right to be here. <laughs> One of the pupils who has not earned the right to be at Leavers Day is Vinny. In his final term, he hardly attended school at all. Are you sad that Vinny's not here? Yeah, really sad. Yeah, I failed. Yeah, sad. Yeah, sad that a lot of money. Because it's... Yeah, because it's... He's a young person that's been let down. Let down by lots of people, but been let down. You know, and I'm, and I'm part of that. So, yeah, it's sad. I sat there and told him he'd be here. I'm going to go, you bugger. Well done. I wish you all the best of luck. I will see you on Monday for your English exam. Ryan, you've got your hand up. I'd like to say something. OK. Go on, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say? Well, I'm not... <laughs> well, let, well I'm, I haven't been here for the longest period of time. Well, about well, two years, as a matter of fact. Maybe, maybe more. <laughs> well, I want to say that these two years are the best two years of my life. <laughs> By people who support each other and do their and do their best, it's their, it's their very hardest. We like each other, like a like a big family. I mean, the team. Fine, you got to go. You got to stop. You got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan for prime minister. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just shut up and let him talk. Um, I hope that you're not disappointed with what you get in the summer. If it's not so good, maybe you need to think about how much work you did to earn it. I am very proud to be your head teacher. Good luck. I'll go to Harlow College. Yeah, I'll try to be a success. Be all I can be. Just like Miss Miss Gollard said. Me, he's an inspiration to all of us. <laughs> it's prom night, and even though Vinny isn't allowed to attend, he's turned up to see what he's missing. See you. I do. Guys, you're not here properly, but you're gonna see you. See you later, sir. Yeah. Very smart chaps. Looking very good. Good to see you, Mr. Goddard. You right? How you yeah. doing, all right? I don't know, he put his uh, not faith, but like he, he thought I was gonna prove him wrong and he really wanted me to prove him wrong, but I didn't, so quite disappointing. Do you think he realizes today what's happening? If he's given five minutes to think about it. I'm sure if he goes on Facebook later and sees people's photos and their comments, he will never admit that and he'd never say that, but yeah, I'm sure he does. He's 15, 16 years old. He's a child. It's like all your mates having Christmas and you not. He's missing out. 
I hope he realises it before it's too late. Results were great, weren't they? Yeah. Are you in Spanish? It just says school's helped me so much. I mean, I'm going to miss you, sir. We're going to miss you. You've given us as much as we've given you, Ryan, I can assure you. So you uh, you just make sure you stay back in touch, eh? I will, sir. <laughs> Good to see you. Estoy muy bien en español. Sí. <laughs> oh, my God. I got bear shit. <laughs> I've actually done quite bad, isn't it? Oh. Quite disappointed. Did you expect anything different? Yeah, no, I didn't expect anything different, obviously, no. because I'm behavior and stuff and I wear in classes, but I don't know. Never too late. I know. Vinny failed to turn up for his final maths exam, but got enough GCSEs to start a plumbing course at college. And he's moved back in with his family. Lucia. Distinction star in your drama. Yeah, I know. Fantastic. 50% of students achieved at least five GCSEs A star to C including English and maths. I got A star in history, A star in music and then a few A's. These are the school's best ever results. Geography. A. What do you hope Year 11s leave your school with? Are you desperate for them to leave with happy memories? An understanding of what it's like to be a citizen, to be part of a community, to be part of a family. Obviously, their exam results are vital as a door opener. You know, education can literally be the torch or the touch paper to let somebody fly. But the day after they've left, I've got a new lot of year 11. And that doesn't demean how important they are to me or how much I'll remember them or how much you look back and enjoy the moments you've had with them. I've got another lot of year 11s to deal with. Will I still care about them? Will I still want to know how they're getting on? Of course I will. But you know, I've done it 20 years. I've done 20 years of, okay, bye, next. Excuse me, young person from here. There's no reason for you to be wearing your coat, remove it. 